Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will learn about the new topic that is angular routing. So we have switched, we have shifted back onto a new topic. Signals is completed. So now we will try to see about the angular routing. So let's try to understand the, we'll see here how we'll set up angular routing step by step. So I will create a new project and in this project, we'll try to create the angular routing step by step. First, let's try to understand step by step guide for angular routing with an example we'll see. First of all, we need to create an angular application with routing. So for that one, what you will try to do? So the, as usual, so I have already created it. So if you want, if you don't have an angular CLI, let's create this angular CLI using the command npm install at the rate angular slash CLI at the rate latest hyphen hyphen global. So that the uh, version, whichever the version is there, so it will be installed, the latest version. So right now it has been installed at the time of this recording. When I try to check the version ng hyphen hyphen version, I'm able to see that 18.2.8. So if you want to check it means you can check it directly ng hyphen hyphen version. You can able to check the version for this one or otherwise you can check the like this also you can check it. I think ng version I didn't remember exactly. So yeah, angular CLA version. So right now the angular has been installed is 18.2.8. So that is the latest version at the time of this recording I have installed it. So fine. So now for creating the angular new project. So you need to use something like ng new angular routing or something like that. whatever the project name you want to give you can give it uh, i have already created a new project with the name angular 18 hyphen routing so now let's try to go one by one so after this command what i will do ng new this command will create a new angular application with the name angular 18 hyphen routing so i already created angular cla will ask whether you want to add angular routing or not so you can answer with this or something like that and it will ask and it will also ask you which style sheet format you want it you can choose this css for simplicity so after running the command it will generate the folder structure for your angular project including the routing module also so let's try to see it so now i have already opened the project here so let's try to go one by one so i will i will uh, increase some font size so that you people can able to see it so fine so now we are in this reading right so let's try to create two two components so a routing requires at least two components to navigate between them. So you can create them using the following commands like ng generate component and I will be using first. So you can also use in the shorthand version something like gc. So you can use something like g for generate, c for a component and I am creating another one second. So these two, these two components I am creating. These commands create two components, first component and also a second component. The CLI will automatically generate the necessary files like HTML, CSS, TypeScript for each component. If you check the folder structure, you will see that components are created in the source slash app slash first and second directories. Okay, you will be able to see it. So fine. So now normally in Angular application, the base href is the important thing. So here the base href is slash is the important thing. It tells Angular where to load resources like routes and assets. By default, it should look like this base href is equal slash something like this. So if the tag is missing or incorrect means routing may not work properly as Angular might not know the base URL of your application. So this is one of the important thing which you need to do it. So fine. So importing your components into the routing module, the next step. So now if you need to, <clears throat> now you need to configure the routing. Angular's routing system is handled by defining routes in an array and passing it to your routing configuration. So for that one, what you can check it is in our app.routes.ts file. So this is the app.routes.ts file and import the components you just created. So now you need to define the routes here. So how we can define the routes is, so here I will write it first and I will explain you. So path is equal to, so I will write it as a first component and I will be loading the component, the first component, okay. In the same scenario, I can have it something like second component. Okay, the, so I will be loading the second component. So this is the routing. <coughs> So here we are defining two routes here. One of one of the one for the first component at the URL path slash first component and other for the second component at the path second component. Now when the user navigates to slash first component means or second component, the respective component will be displayed. So now we have created the routes. So Angular CLA typically sets up the route routes for you in the app.config.ts file. So now if you have installed it, automatically Angular will define the routes for you. So here if you try to see provide router of routes. So if you have installed it manually, something like that means, so you need to provide in the providers, you need to provide this provide router and the routes that is nothing but the app dot routes, which you have imported it. So we need to configure it. So now this one is finished. 
So the next step, what we need to do it is we need to add the links to the components in the template. To allow the users to navigate between the components, you need to provide links. These links should be added in the app.component.html file. So fine, let's go to the app.component.html file. I'll be removing this one all. So here I will write Angular, Angular Router App. And here I'll be having the navigation. Okay. And here I can have one UL. And here I can have LI. I will explain you each one by one. So here, Router link is equal to so it should be something like slash first component okay and here you can have router link active is equal to active and here i can write first and the another one is the same thing so but this time you will be having the second component and here i will be having the second so that's it this is the template so now here what I have did is I have used this router link directive creates navigation links to the routes and here router link active directive adds the class active whenever the route is active. So that means whenever the user clicks on this link or whenever the user navigated to this path means so the class active will be added to this one so that you can apply the CSS for that one and you will need to add in another one that is nothing but router outlet. Okay, so this is also one of the important thing. And it is a placeholder where Angular will display the component that matches the current route. So wherever the, ma the route matches, matches means that component will be loaded in the place of the route outlet. So now we have finished this one all. Since this application is using the standalone components, that is a new feature in Angular 18, we need to add some necessary imports in the app component. So we need to modify the app.component.ts file also. So this is our thing. And here what we need to do it is we need to add some concepts. Route outlet is already added. So now we need to add the common module. I will like to explain you this one all. Common module and also we need to add router link. And also we need to add the router link active also. These are the directives, right? So we need to add router link active. That's it. So now here we have added router outlet, router link and router link active are necessary for routing to function properly. So we import them here. And the common module why we have used it is so in order to work for something like ng if and all those things if you want to make it work means then we need to use this common module fine so now we have completed the basic setup for this uh, angular routing application so what you need to do it is so you need to run the npm start and ng serve automatically the build will be done and where what you need to do it is you need to open the local host slash 4200 so like this it will be open so now what i can do it is so here if i try to click on this first so here you'll be able to see that first works. So here you'll be able to see the, the routing. So whichever the routing we have added, the routing is getting loaded. So we have successfully set up the Angular routing in this one. So this is the basic Angular app with routing enabled. So this is the introduction of this Angular routing. So this is the basic Angular routing, how we need to, how we can enable it. Hope you understood about this concept. So if you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. So in this video, let's try to uh, understand about the with component input binding feature. So what is this with component input binding feature? This feature allows us to bind root parameters directly to the component inputs when navigating between the routes. It simplifies passing root related data such as IDs or query parameters to components. I will try to explain you step by step regarding this one. So let's try to see the step-by-step -step installation of this one. For this one, I will uh, try to take the grocery item, something like that, a simple example, displaying and editing of the grocery items. So let's say that in our app, we will be having the two main routes. So let's go to the routing here. And here I will be having the app.route.ts file. Okay. So in this one, what I will try, what I would try to take it is, so we will be having two components, groceries, uh, what I will try to do it is so I will try to take the grocery list and also edit grocery item. So here I will create nggc grocery list grocery list. So spelling mistake grocery list. So the next one we will be having is the nggc edit grocery item. So this is the another component which I would try to create it. So before after creating this one so you here i will be having so path if you are traveling to groceries groceries 
then I would want to show the component grocery list item grocery list component and if I want to go to the path of uh, groceries groceries sorry gross uh, groceries this one right groceries slash edit slash id so this one is the uh, dynamic one i will try to explain you this one also so i here i would lo want to load the component edit grocery item edit grocery item component that's it so these are the two components which i would try to do it and we also know that in our app.config.pts file so we will be providing the router with app routes right and here we need to add something like with component input binding so we need to provide it this one with component input binding so bind root so in this case now what i want to do it is so let's go to the edit grocery edit grocery component dot ts file so in this one so which i would try to do it is so in this one so we would get an id right so here we have we have mentioning it as a dynamic id so this is the id which we will be getting the grocery id so for this one what we will write we will try to whenever you mention this one as with component input binding so this would be passed as an input parameter so that means here in our edit grocery so we can capture it as an input so here at the rate input so we can also take it as a signal based input also it's not a problem and we, when we get the id i am using the set id so here i will be getting the grocery id as a string okay and in this one so what i would try to do so here i would try to get the grocery details okay grocery details of the id so that means so we need to have a service so i will try to create the service also so for this one we need to inject the grocery service so let's try to have a grocery service dot as well so here in our app we are having these all the components right so for this one i will be creating a new folder that is services and grocery dot service dot ts file so here i will be having grocery dot service dot ts file and for this one i will be having at the rate injectable provided in root so let's create the grocery service export class grocery service i will be having the grocery service and in this grocery service so let's say that we will be having uh, groceries so private groceries equal to i'll be having array id of one and i can have something like name apples let's assume in the same scenario i can have id of two and here we can have bananas and the another one is carrots id of three so let's say that these are the groceries which we we'll be having and we need to have a grocery of string right so i will be having get grocery <coughs> by id and this one you will be sending the id of number so we can have we can send the number also and here so we can have something like uh, i will try to get the constant grocery is equal to this dot groceries dot find of item sorry item dot id triple equal to id that's it so we can get it something like grocery and we can return the grocery so i want to return the grocery in such a way that return uh, normally we will get an observable right so like this i will try to return it return off of grocery okay so that's it so now we have created the grocery by id so now we need to display the groceries list here so let's go to the um, groceries list so fine let's leave it like this so let's go to the groceries list or otherwise what i will try to do it is so we are we are having the edit grocery item.ts right so we can inject the grocery so constructor private grocery service service of type grocery service so i have imported this grocery service so now we need to get the grocery details right so here this dot grocery so we can have a grocery here grocery dollar it is of type observable let's say that we can have any 
okay so let's have this one as must and should this dot grocery dollar is equal to this dot grocery service dot get grocery by id and we need to pass the grocery id that's it so now here we are sending the grocery id of strike is not assignable to the okay so let's try to make it as an integer fine fine right so now we are trying to send it so that's it so now let's go to the groceries list so we'll try to show the groceries list also so here i'll be having the groceries list dot item so here uh, what i can do it is so if you want to get the grocery list of items so what can i do here we inject the grocery constructor so actually we don't have a groceries that one so i uh, grocery service is there right so here i can do get groceries and here a return of of this dot groceries okay so now here i can take it this one all and here i can have grocery list so <coughs> grocery grocery service is equal to inject we can also use this one also grocery grocery service okay we got the service and here what i want to do Mm, groceries dollar is equal to this dot grocery service dot get groceries okay so we got the groceries and here we can go uh, to the html and here what i can do so here we will be having the grocery list right so here i can do uh, such a way that i will copy and paste the code enter code so that you can able to understand it so here we are getting the groceries and here i can do the async okay and here we will be having the router link grocery slash edit slash grocery id so router link we are getting it an error right so what i can do here so we need to add in the imports common module and also the router link that's it so now if you try to see in the html so all the errors has been gone away so now we are able to see this grocery list and in our edit grocery in the html file so we need to show some data right in the edit grocery item edit grocery item so we need to show the item so i will try to copy it and paste it again here so we are getting the ng grocery async and the edit grocery dot name we will be showing the grocery dot name okay so now let's go to the here so we are getting the grocery here observable of any so that's it so we can have common module if you want that's it so now if you try to see the output for this one so let's go here into this and here i oh some error we are getting it let's try to see whether whether we are getting an error or not so fine slash groceries let's try to see whether we can able to get the groceries or not so we are not able to get any groceries so what is this error so let's try to see here okay we are getting error error busy oh some problem came with my npm so let's try to restart it again so fine so that's it so now it is working sometimes for me i don't know uh, it's still that resource busy or logged for you also whether you are getting this issue or not let me know in the comments so what i will try to do it is i will close the visual studio code and i will uh, rerun the command build command again now if you try to see here the output hopefully everything is working fine and here you will be able to see the grocery list also slash groceries and if i click on the edit so you will be able to see that edit apples we are able to get the edit apples also now if i click on here edit bananas so that means we are able to get that id as an uh, what i mean to say as an input parameter so that we can use it, this one as an input so this is how we will be doing this grocery list hope you understood about this concept if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev in this video we will learn about the another concept which i want to explain you about the params inheriting in the child so if you want to inherit the params means to the child element to the child comp child root so how we can do this one so i will try to explain you the scenario so that you will be able will be able to understand this one for example let's say that if you are having a child rooting so don't uh, think about this child rooting and all those things i will explain you in the uh, upcoming videos also about the nested rooting here i want to explain you about the uh, params inheriting so here i can have a children in such a way that and we will try to implement this entire thing in a signals also right now we have implemented this one in a uh, observables right now we will try to use it in a signal space let's say that we are having slash grocery 
let's say here you will be having a category id okay and here you will be having something like details let's say that we will be having the details and in this one you will be having the grocery id so like this you are having so now when you are trying to open this grocery id details so normally if you want to get those details means category id also if you want to get this means how can we do it let's try to understand this one so now we will be able to get this one so let's go to the grocery list i want to i want to change this one all so here we are having this one all as in uh, what i want to say as in uh, observable right so if you want to convert this one as a uh, what i want to do is as a <coughs> signal so then how we can do it so here you can write it something like groceries signal okay is equal to so you can convert it into two signal so you can convert this all to signal you can do it like this that's it so now you can remove entire this one and here so this one has been converted into a grocery signal now you can go into this one and here you can say so groceries signal that's it so now you will be able to get everything now if you try to see the code for this one so you will be having something like uh, uh, grocery uh, sorry slash groceries slash some category id if you try to see the output you'll be able to see this entire details but this time we are able to get it as in grocery signal so here if you try to see here we are having the grocery signal and this is a read only signal which is having we are having array of three so fine so now we are able to get this signal now let's go to the edit groceries dot component dot ts file so now he, here if you want to get this one as an input means so here you can get it category id is equal to and i can use the input signal of category sorry category id so whichever we are trying to pass this one as a signal and if you want to check this whether we are able to get a signal or not means then you can get it as an ng on init and i will do cancel.log of um, category signal id plus this dot category id so now we are able to get this signal so now if you see the output for this one so in the console you will be able to see see the character signal id is so dsds whatever the signal i am trying to pass it so here when i am trying to click on this edit so we need to go to a child routing okay fine let's go to the groceries.html and here we don't want this one all so let's try to remove this one all or otherwise i can remove this one all so here i want to go to the details that's it so now let's try to see so here we will be able to see slash details slash one two three when I click on this one, so here I need to open the child routing. For that one, what we need to do it is, so here I need to implement the route routelet again. Okay, that's it. So now we need to have the implement, you need to import this router outlet also. Router outlet, that's it. Now let's go to the edit grocery. And here in this one, so uh, we will be getting two input signals. One is category ID, that is nothing but input of category id category id and we will be able to get a grocery id grocery id also will be getting that is nothing but a grocery id okay fine so now let's go into the ng on init ng on init sorry ng on init and here you will be having <coughs> uh, something like ng on init okay so here I can have console.log so like a child component this one is a child component I am using it and here I will be having console.log this dot category id I want to get the category id and also I want to get the grocery id also ok so that's it now if you try to see the output for this one so you are able to see that when we are getting it as an undefined but here we are having the category but we are getting this one as undefined why because so why we are getting is an undefined is so this this pay this param is coming from the parent so if you want to get the params that you want to get it from the parent also then what you need to do it is so here in our code wherever the things we are having app.config.ts so here you need to provide in another one that is nothing but with the router config and here you need to provide an object and in this one you will be having params inherit strategy so that means we need to inherit the params from the 
parent also params inherit strategy and it will be having always empty only so you need to select the always then you will be able to get the param from the so here you will be able to see the param the category id also we are able to get instead of getting undefined we are able to get the params also so now we are able to get the child one and also the parent one also we are able to get it so now if you want to use it the parent params in the child means you can use it without any problem so now in the edit grocery component we'll try to convert it into a signal so this one grocery signal this one all we can remove it so i can remove this entire thing okay or otherwise i'll keep it like this so here you'll be having a grocery so you can have it as a signal so now what i want to do it is so i need to call this one right so i need to call this one so i need to so this one you know that this one returns an observable okay we need to convert it into a signal okay i will convert it into a signal so we can use that to signal and here to signal means we need to return the observable so here what i can do it is so i can use something like this dot like this i can use directly fine right so now here the grocery id means nothing but this dot grocery id so this dot grocery id okay so now we are able to get it but the here this one is telling that is used before initialization okay so let's try to check whether we are able to get it or not inject of grocery service so i want to remove this one and here also in the constructor grocery dollar and all those things also i will try to remove this one ng on init uh, let's let it leave like that so fine right so now we have used through signal and we are using it and now what i want to do grocery service is there injected and now let's go to here in this one so we are getting this one as sorry not this one here so we are getting this one as grocery signal so okay let's try to have it as an mm, grocery signal as grocery we can keep it like this let's see whether we can able to out, get the output or not so now we are able to see the same thing and here when i am trying to click on this one so we are not able to get the output so let's go to the angular and we we'll, let's try to see it so we are able to get this one but here we are getting the grocery id and also the this one we are getting it grocery service also we are getting but this one we are getting it is undefined so why because when this one is getting executed so now here what which i want to do edit grocery yeah so when this one is executing this this grocery id is remained as undefined because of that one we are able to get this one as undefined so now in order to so grocery id it will be emitted so it will take some time to be executed so what i need to do so if you try to push it into the two signal so will it work let's try to see it so grocery signal is equal to here i will try to do it okay so grocery signal and if i here what i will try to do here grocery signal of type uh, signal sorry signal signal of empty let's say i will try to keep it like this sorry is equal to signal of empty i will try to do it like this signal of empty okay so grocery signal did you mean the interface so here i will try to use the same thing as this dot grocery signal i will try to show you the scenario so now here it is saying that id number string undefined is missing the following properties writable signal okay so here we need to something like we need to set it so this one will not be possible so why because so here you need what you need to do dot set of like this it is asking us to save it okay so but this one you are getting an error there why because so it is not assignable something like that to parameter string or something like that it is saying so we are getting the errors for this one okay or otherwise we can say it as any let's try to take it as an any so now let's try to see it so now if i see the output for this one let's see the output for this one so if i click on this apples so now here in our uh, here so we are getting still getting it as an empty only signal signal of empty we are getting signal signal of empty so grocery signal we are not able to get it okay so here so we are able to get this one as problem so we cannot use it like this so how the re correct way how we can use it is so here only we need to use in such a way that first of all we know that grocery id is an so here you can convert into first you, i want to convert into signal so first one the grocery id is a signal first of all what i can do it is i want to convert it into two observable which one mm, this dot grocery id so i will convert it observable and i will try to do the pipe map and switch map i will use the switch map 
and in this one i will get i know that i will get the id and in this one i will do this dot grocery service dot get grocery by id and i will pass the plus id that's it and here what i will do here i will return this one so here i will return this one so here i think i need to do it like this i think so that's it so now what i have did it here so what is the problem for this one yeah so now what i have did it so grocery signal we got it so i am converting it into a signal first i am converting it into an observable then i am trying to do like this like this so if you want whatever you want you can do it so now we have converted into this one so now if you try to see the output for this one see now we will be able to see the edit apples now if you check here in this one also you will be able to see a read only signal and we are able to see the value now whenever i change the data so you will be able to see the output so now here you will be able to see the output without any problem so now entire thing we have converted into a signals and we are we are uh, we are doing this one in an entirely signal based thing so this is how you can use the signal thing and also observable thing either way is okay but we have learned the signals concept in angular 8 in the previous videos so that's why i try to i want to explain you how we can implement the same concept using the signals that's it guys about this one hope you understood about this concept if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is lila welcome to my channel lila webdev so in this video what we will try to do it is so we will try to find out the displaying of the 404 pages and also the redirects in the angular how we can do this one in the angular let's try to see so first of all let's see setting up a while route a while route in angular is a catch all route this route is used to handle any urls that don't match our defined routes allowing you to redirect to the user the to a page not found component or perform other actions like redirection so let's try to see the step by step how we can set up a wildcard route so for this one what we need to do it is we need to create a new component that is nothing but ng generate or gc page not found so i am creating a component new component page not found so here i am creating a new component which will take some time so let it create by the time what i will try to do it is so here we need to set up the route so for this one what we need to do it is so here i need to mention the path as star star so here i will mention the path star star and we need to provide the component that is nothing but page not found component so it is still installing so here the star 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 so what does it represent it is a wildcard route that angular uses when none of the other paths match and the page not found is the component which you will be page not found component yeah so is the component that will be displayed when a user navigates to an unknown route so if you want to test this one means so what you need what you need to do so let's go to the here into this one and you can give any random route that doesn't have in our routes file so now if you try to see here you'll be able to see a page not found so the component has been loaded so this is how we will be doing it so now let's try to design this 404 page so how we can configure this 404 page so we have created the 404 right you can also design this page not found component to provide a friendly message to the user so for this one what we can do it is so here let's go to the page not found that is nothing but this is our component and here in this one in the html instead of providing like this i can use it something like page not found 404 and also i can provide something like router link so here for this one we need to give the router link here router link that's it so now here the page not found has been came now whenever you are trying to go to a random page so here you will be able to see a page 404 page and page your and click back to the home page so if you click on this one so it is going back to the home page but home page so this is the home page we are having it right so we doesn't have a home page right up to now we doesn't have a home page so for this home page so that's why we are uh, showing this page not 404 sometimes so what we'll try to do it is so instead of showing the 404 page you can automatically redirect the users from certain routes to the other routes so you can set both static and dynamic routes in angular so let's try to see how we can set this one so right now the home page we need to set this one right so for this one what i can do it is in the app route ds so here i can use something like path path is equal to empty so whenever the user comes to the home page so what i need to do so instead of loading the component i need to redirect i need to redirect the person to the particular url so that is nothing but first component in this case the first component so i will try to do the first component that's it and also here you need to mention it as in path match full. I will try to mention you that one. What is the path match full? So that's it. So now here we have mentioned it this one. So now if you try to see here. So now when I am trying to uh, go for some particular uh, page. Okay. So now this page is not available. And here 
Okay, so this one is a page not found and click back to the home page. If I go to the home page, so we are going into the first component. So now here, if I click here, it will go back to the first component. So here the path means matches the root of the application. So here path empty means it matches the root of the application and redirect to the first component means it sends users to the first component and path match full means it ensures that full URL must match the empty string. So that is the main thing. So now that is the thing. So now the, uh, apart from this one also, we can also set up the dynamic redirect also. So we can add a dynamic redirect based on the query parameters. You can also set up a redirect that dynamically adjusts based on the query parameters or other data. For example, let's say that you have a user. Okay. So uh, let's say that we'll create a new user component so that you will be able to understand. So NGGC, NGGC user. So we are having a user component. And in this user component, let's say that previously we used to have a old user page. So right now we have created our new page and whatever the, whoever the users are coming from this old user page, we need to redirect it to the new user page. For example, let's say that here we are having the path user slash user ID. So this is the new one. And I want to load the component uh, user component user component. So that means so whoever the user comes something like here. Uh, user slash 24 or 34 something like that so here we'll be able to see the user work so that means user page has been loaded for example let's say that previous before to this one this is our new user profile url prior to this one before that one so what we have it is we have a old user page like this let's say the url is and user id is equal to 23 so we have a something page like this previously and now whoever the user comes to here we need to transfer him to slash user slash 23. So he has the user ID 23, right? So we need to redirect the user to user slash 23. Like this, we need to redirect that guy. So how we can do this one in the routing base only, we can do it. So how we can do it is, so let's try to see. I will try to show you. Here we can write in such a way that <coughs> path old user page. Okay, so we'll be having something like old user page. And in this one, what I want to do, I want to redirect. Okay. So normally what we have did it is to redirect to the slash user. We have did it, but we need to capture that uh, query parameter also, right? So for that one, what we can have it is, so it will take the function. Okay. So it will take the function and here you will be able to get the route data. Okay. So you will be able to get the route data. I will try to show you the route data. So console.log of data. Okay. And in this one, so here we need to return any URL so slash first component or something like this, I will try to return it so that I can show you the output for this one. So now here I will take the comma. So fine. So now when the user comes to the slash old user page, so here uh, old iPhone. So like this, when the user comes here, see, you will be able to see a data. Okay. So in this one, we are able to see a query params user ID of 23. So this is the query param, which we are able to see it. So now we need to capture this query param. So what can I do here? So here in this one, we are able to get the data dot query params dot user ID, right? So here I want to get only the query params. I can use the ES6, ES6 model. So query params, I got it. Now what I want to do here. So let's say that if you are, uh, I can capture the error handler also. So I can do the error handler is equal to inject of error handler. So we will be injecting this error handler from the angular core. And I want to get the user param. So uh, from where I can get it. There is nothing but query params dot user ID. Okay. So we are able to get this user params, query params dot user ID instead of this one. So you can use it something like this. Okay. So now we got the query params. If user ID param is there, if user ID param, so we'll try to make it as a user ID param so that it will be easy. So if user ID param is there, then what I need to do. So here I will return to the user slash user slash dollar of user ID param. So that means I am transferring to the, I am framing this URL directly. And if the, if the person, uh, any person doesn't send any user ID param means then what I need to do. So just, I will uh, send it to hit, send it to the, uh, not phone page. So I will uh, show you. So here I will paste it here. Yeah. So like this attempted navigation to the user page without user ID and we are returning the not phone page. So this is the handle error we are doing. Now, if you try to see the output for this one, now we, when you are trying to see the output for this one, so old user page, old user page, user ID 23, if I try to do it. So here, see, if you try to see, so we are transferring the user to the user slash 23. 
so now if i try to do it something like old user page question mark user id is equal to i will try to do the 78 now it will be transferred to user ID slash user slash 78 so like this we can dynamically redirect the routing also for example let's say that we if the user doesn't send any old user page if that user doesn't send any query parameter means we have handled that case also page not found so this one we have handled it so we are transferring it to the not found page so like this the redirect to function takes query parameters and process them if a user id is provided the user is user id the user is redirected to the user slash user id route if the user id is missing means the error is logged and the user is redirected to a not found route so like this you can do it so the total summary in this one is the wildcard route path star star catches all unknown routes and can be used to display a 404 page or perform other actions. A wildcard route can redirect users to a page not found to display a friendly 404 error message also we have seen it. So redirects can be static example sending users to another route or dynamic also redirecting based on the query parameters or other conditions. So this setup ensures your application can handle undefined routes and redirects smoothly improving the user experience. So that's it guys about this one, uh, handling this via page not found and wildcard entries. Hope you understood about this concept. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdo. In this video, we will learn about the another important concept, new concept that is nested routes. So to explain the concept of nested routes using the Angular 18 standalone com components, let's try to see it. So now we, in this video, we'll say, see, we'll show how to set up the child roots with a parent root and we'll use the standalone components. So in Angular, child roots allow you to nest routes under a parent root. This is useful when you want a specific part of your application to display different views based on navigation, but still maintain some shared layout or the content. For example, let's say that uh, imagine you have a first component and it has two child components, child A component and also a child B component. First component might display a shared layout like a navigation menu or something like that and the child components render based on the current route. So then we will be using this nested thing. So for that one what we will try to do it, let's try to create a, a components for this one. So already we have a first component. So what I will try to do it is I will create the child A component and also child B component. So nggc child A component. Okay. And the another one which I want to create is the child B component. So let's go by the time, let's go on to the app.routes.ts file. So here we are having the first component, second component, and these are all the things we are having it, right? So I don't want to uh, mix up these all the things. So here we are having the first component. So in this first component, I want to create a children root. So okay. So we will be using the children like this. So I will try to show you one by one. Let's try create nggc child b so i am creating this child b also so now let's go to the first component so in the first component what i want to do it is it's have it will have its own nav with the links to the child component and route routelet so that means so let's say that app.component.html in this one i don't want to create this nav and all the things i will so here this is our route routelet and i will go to the first component.html file so in this one i want to have a navigation okay so let's try to create a first component. So this is our H2 first component. And why it's coming like this H2 first component. First component dot HTML file. Okay. Let's try to remove it. H2 first component. I don't know why it has came like that. Okay, fine. First component and I will be having a nav link. In this one, I will be having a UL and LI. Okay. So here I can have a router link. Router link. Router link is equal to. So here I will be having the child hyphen A. And this one will be child A. And the another one, same thing like this. Okay. Sorry. So I can have the same thing like this and I will paste it. And here I will be having the child B and here I can have a child B. Okay. That's it. So now we are, we already have a two child routes. So now at the bottom, what we need to do is we need to create a router outlet here so that the child route will load here in this place. So fine. So now we have created our first child component, right? So let's try to create our first child component. 
So now what I want to do it is in our first component, child A component, uh, what I can do here in our child component. So just child A component, so same like this only, we'll keep it like that one only. And now we need to define the routes for this one. So where we need to define the routes? In our app.routes.es file. So we need to define the routes here. So here you will be having in the first component, you will be having something like a children. Okay. So this will take an array. And here in this one, you will mention the path. There is nothing but whoever opens the child a, child hyphen a. And we need to load the component. There is nothing but child a component. In the same scenario, child b, we will be having the child b. Okay, child b. And whoever opens the component, it should be child b component. So here I need to keep it like child b component. Child b component that's it so now here we this is the first component and child a and child b component we have did it so now that we have defined the routes whenever the user navigates to first component slash child a the first component will be re rendered with the child a component inside the route routelet so let's try to see the output for this one so let's try to see the output for this one 715 error occurs in the template first component i don't know what is that error route routelet okay okay so what we need to do we need to have the uh, router outlet here router outlet and also we need to have the router link also because we are using the both the options right so now let's see that yeah it has been executed now if you go into our output and if you try to check it here the first component if you try to check the first component so here you will be able to see the child a and child b and the benefit of this one is nested components is so this layout will be rendered like that only and if I click on the child A, you will be able to see the, the subcomponent or the child component has been loaded at the bottom, wherever the uh, router outlet has been defined. And if you click on the child B and the child B works also, it has been loaded. So this is how actually the nested routing will work. So here the first component has a router outlet that acts as a placeholder for the child component. So here in our first component, so we are having a router outlet which will act as a placeholder for the child components. Child components like child A component or ch and child B component are rendered inside the route outlet of the parent when their respective paths are navigated to. So the routes configuration defines the parent child uh, relationship with the children array. So here in our thing, so the different the, the relationship between the parent and the children will be defined in the children thing. So these setups allows you to create nested, more organized routing structure in your Angular application. So this is how you will be designing it. And for example, let's say that when you are, you are having a child uh, 404 page or something like that means then what you can do, for example, let's say that here you are having a route which doesn't matter. Then automatically it will move to the 404 not page. And if you want to have this one means so in our app.component.html, you can have a header page also. So here you can have it. Oh, sorry. This one is all. Uh, uh, and I can copy this one and I can paste it here. So this is our angular route app header. You can have it something like a header here. Now, if you try to check the output for this one. So now, so this is our header. Okay. And let's say that, uh, and this is our first component. If you open this one, so this is our first component. So angular root app router app header will be like, as it is like that only. And this is our navigation. Let's assume that this is something looks like our navigation. And when I click on the child a, you will be able to see the pages, uh, at the thing so this is our top navigation and this is our side navigation and whenever you click on here the content will be changed as well so this is how if you want to achieve this type of uh, uh, what i can say is this type of functionality and all those things the only way which could be possible is the through the child routing only and here what we need to do so you as you already people know about this one in app.config.ts uh, so you need to provide the router so this will be automatically added into this one that's not a problem but if you if it is not added means you need to have a Add it, provide router and the routes. These routes will be coming from the app.routes.ts file. So this is how we will be implementing the child routing or the nested routing in the Angular. Hope you understood about this concept. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel, Leela Webdev. In this video, we will try to learn how to set up the dynamic page titles in the Angular 18 standard standalone components using both a, both a root level title configuration and also a custom title strategy. Let's try to see it. So first of all, setting up the roots with the titles. In Angular, 
Each route can have a title property, which will be used to set the document's title in the browser. The title, uh, let's try to go it here. Yeah, here. Each route can have a title property. The title will show up in browser tabs and the browser history. Additionally, you can dynamically resolve these titles using resolve function also. I will try to show you that one. Here is an example where routes are defined and each one has a title. So first one is the first process how we can do it is for example, let's say that you are having a children. Let's say that uh, you will be having a first component and this for this first component, if you want to add a title means simply it's a static title. Title is equal to here. You can write it as an first component. Okay, that's it. So this is the first one. So now if you try to see here at the top, you will be able to see the title of this one. The document title of this one has been changed to first component. Okay. And the next one, which I want to tell you is the resolve function. So we can also use a promise resolve function. So dynamically for setting the, uh, what I want to say is for setting the title of this one. So for dynamically setting of this one, so we can also use a resolve function. So how can I use this one is, so I will try to show you at the top only here we can have close this one. So here I can have in such a way that constant. So resolved, resolved child a title is equal to and here we will be having a resolve function so there is nothing but it will try to return a promise resolve promise so return promise promise dot resolve of and this one will return something like child a dynamic title that's it so this one is a resolve function so here you will be able to see it's a promise of type and this resolved title. So wherever you want to use it, you can use it title and here I can pass this one. That's it. So like this also, you can pass it. So resolve function, you can pass it. Now, if you try to go to the child a, you will be able to see this one child a dynamic title. So now the title also has been changed. So this is how you can set dynamic title resolved using a resolve function. And for the child B or the first components and something like that means you can use the, uh, static title like this you can use a static title and this one is child a child b sorry so for child b you will be able to see it's a child b component and child a component like this you'll be able to resolve this one so resolved here we have used the resolved child title right so what does it will do is this is a resolve function that dynamically resolves a title for the child a route in this case it simply results a resolved promise with the strong with the string sorry child a dynamic title and the routes configuration the routes array define three routes first component child a and child b the parent root has the title first component and the child a has a dynamically resolved title and a child b the one which is have a static title there is nothing but the child b component we are having it so this setup means that whenever you navigate to first component slash child a angular will automatically set the title that is nothing but dynamic title and for the first child b it will set the title as a child b component <coughs> so this is how you will be trying to resolve uh, trying to add a title that is dynamic and also a static title so the next one which i want to explain you is the customizing the page title format with the title strategy so what is that one angular allows you to create custom title strategy services to modify the way the page titles are handled globally. For instance, let's say that you can append a common prefix like your application name to all the page titles. So generally we will be using this type of scenario. If you want to add a common prefix or a suffix to a page title, like uh, you can add your application name. So like Leela web dev, you can add it at the starting or ending of the title so that it should be repeated for every title. It should be added as a global thing, common thing. So how we can implement that one. So here is an example of common title strategy that prefixes every page title with, I will try to show you with my application and a <coughs> vertical line. I will try to show you. So now let's try to see for this one. What I need to create is I need to create a new file. That is nothing, but it's a service file. So template page title strategy. I will try to create it something like in the services template page title strategy strategy dot tsml so the name can be whatever it may be so just i am trying to create it for you so here i will be using export class template page title strategy 
and it should extends the title strategy okay title strategy it should be imported from the router so now this should be injectable injectable and provided in root i will be using provided provided in sorry provided in root okay and now this one extends the title strategy means so we need to uh, import the title so here i will be using the constructor we need to inject the title sorry inject private title it is of type title so this title should be imported from the angular platform browser and we need to execute the constructor which is available in the parent class super and here we need to implement the override the update title so whenever you are trying to use it here so here you need to use the non abstract class template does not implement inherited abstract member update title so we need to implement the abstract member update title that is the only right update after my update title okay so let's try to implement the update title okay so here we will be getting the router snapshot so you can have a router state or router snapshot whatever it may be so normally we will use it as a router state so here what i will try to do so first let's try to get the title constant title first of all we will get the title this dot build title so this one you will be getting it from the title which should be imported from the angular platform so we will get the existing title so from the router state okay the existing page you will get the title and if the title is not equal to defined so if the title is not equal to undefined okay so if it is not undefined means so that means if any title value is there means then we need to prefix it so here i will be setting that this dot title dot set title of and here i will be adding something like my application okay and here i will add a or symbol and i will be using the dollar of title that's it so whatever the title we are getting it now we have implemented this my application thing so now here what we have did it is template this class extends the angular title strategy and customizes the document title is set how the document title is set and we are having an update title this method is called whenever a route is activated so whenever a route is activated this method will be called and it constructs the title using the build title okay so build title or set which gets the title from the router configuration it will get the right title from the router configuration if then it then appends my application to the beginning of the title before setting it into the document so now the next step what we need to do it is we need to apply this custom title strategy globally so note that we have a custom title strategy now we need to apply it globally using the angular's provider system so with angular 18 the standalone components you can configure app wide providers in the application config So let's go to the app dot config dot ts file. So here we are having. Now here I need to apply this provider. So here I will be apply provide. So title strategy. Okay, which should be imported from the Angular router. And here you can use the class. Use class. And here I can use the template. Page title strategy. That's it. So now we have imported this one also. Now whenever you are using it, so here you will be able to see. my application has been appended to the component so if you try to click on this one and if i try to click on this one see here we are able to see the component so this is how we will be implementing the my application so here application config means so this is the this is where you define the global application providers in angular 18 provide router route means so it will provides the routes where we defined earlier so we have used the provider type title strategy right this tells angular to use our custom template strategy for updating the document so now <coughs> so this is how we will be implementing the code so this is how we will be implementing it so this approach ensures that each route title is dynamically updated with a common prefix making your application navigation experience more user friendly and identifiable so if you want to add the title in the ng or in it something like that if you are getting it from http client or something like that means for example let's say that uh, let's say that you are having a ng uh, here you will be having So here, what you need to do? So here, you can get something like uh, ng on in it. You can use the ng on in it, and you can use the HTTP client or something like that. This will return in uh, uh, what I want to say uh, observable. So let's say that I have written an observable, and here I will be returning something like off, okay? And here I can use something like uh, observable title. So this let's assume that this is coming from the HTTP client. Let's assume. and here what i can do it is 
so we can have an dot subscribe so i am trying to do the subscribe and here you will be having the subscribe and here i can use the next okay and i will be getting the title so i will be getting the title here so what i need to do it is we need to use the uh, we need to we, uh, we need to, we need to use the <coughs> title so we need to inject the title here i can use constant title sorry title is equal to inject of title so this should be imported from the angular platform browser so now when you got the title so here i can use this dot title dot set title you will be having the set title and i can set the title here directly that's it so now if you go to the child b if i click on the child b you will be able to see a observable title here so in the ngr unit if you are getting it from the http client or something like that if you want to set it means like this you need to set it so if you want to have a something around uh, uh, what i want to tell what i want to tell is so if you want to have a prefix and all those things means you need to set the prefix only why because we need we are modifying that one in the ng on init why because already the router has been activated so that is the how we will be using so we need to use a config or something like that and we need to use the config thing. hope you understood about this concept if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you like that so i will try to explain you clearly in angular when you navigate between the routes you can specify routes either as an absolute or a relative a relative route is determined A relative route is determined based on the current route. For example, let's say that if you are on the path something like example, let's say the slash home and you want to navigate to slash home slash items means then you can append the route items relative to the current route. So again, the next one is the relative to property allows you to specify a relative route based on the activated route instance, which represents the current route the user is on. So let's try, I will try to explain you the step by step how you can able to achieve this one. So for this one, we will create two routes, a parent route and also a child route. We will use the relative to property to navigate from the home route to the items route. So let's try to, I will try to explain you. For this one, what I will try to do it is, I will create two routes. That is nothing but ng gc home and I will create another one items. So we will have a two components items and let, it will take some time to implement. And also I will create another component also ng gc items. So I am creating these two components. Let us create it. So here the two components has been created. So for this one, what I will try to do is I'll create the two routes. There is nothing but path. So whenever you are having a path slash home and I will load the component home component. Okay. Home component. And the next one, which I will be having is the path and I will be having home slash items. So I will try to keep it like this so that you will be able, able to understand. So just here I am targeting the relative thing. So you will be able to, I have an idea on this one. So these are the two components which I will be having it. So now we will be providing these routers and all those things. So fine. So let's go to the home component. <coughs> this one. So now if I try to click on slash home. Okay. And here you will be able to see the home works. So fine. So let's go to the home component and I will close these all the things and here I will be opening the home component or ts file and let's open this html file also for this one. So I will open the html file <coughs> and here I am having h1. So here I will open the home component fine and here instead of having an anchor link what I want to do it is I will create a button okay I will show you the button thing why it is. So normal, let's say I will try to show you a uh, router link also. So for example, let's say that I want to move to the uh, a router link. I will be using the router link. Okay. And here what we will be having something like if I want to move means home slash items will have it. And these all router link active and all those things. I don't want to concentrate more on this one. So here go to items. <coughs> I will be having something like this. And if you try to see here. So a router link here, we are able to have it. And here I can import the router link here. Router link like this. Now, if you try to see if you go into the home and if I click on this one, so you will be able to see that we have moved to the item slash item works. Now, for example, let's say that if you are having only the items. Okay. So what will happen here? So you will be able to see that you'll be able to see localhost items is there. So that means the page is not there. Fine. 
but if i remove this one means so what will happen is in the router link if i click on this one see it again went into the item works why because so the router link which we are trying to have it here it is relative to the current the current one so here the current one is nothing but slash home so the items url the path will be appended to this la home slash home slash items if you don't mention the slash here so this is related to the anchor link but if you want to programmatically navigate to the page means let's say that i am having the same thing like a button okay so go to items so i am i will be having here like this so for this one i will be having a click event click is equal to go to item okay so this is the method which i will be having so now in our home component.ts file so here i will be pro i need to provide it like this so here what i need to do so in order to navigate from one page to another what i need to do it is so if you try to see here so here i will be able to see if i go back here here i will be able to see go to it if i click on this one so i need to move to the slash home slash items okay so if you move if you want to move from to the slash home slash items means what we need to do here so first of all we need to have an router so let's try to inject the router here constructor private router is equal to which need to be imported from the router angular router okay so router and also we need to <coughs> that's it so now we have a router so what i will so in the router you will be having a method in such a way that this dot router dot navigate okay and here you can provide the items so here you need to provide the items that's it so now when you click on this go to items here so you will be able to see that local host slash items we are able to see it so that means it is directly it is an absolute path it is directly moving so if you want to provide it total means so you need to provide slash home slash items now if you go back and if you click on this one so now i am able to go to the items but here we know that we are already in the home component so that means this home component we are already in this one so it, the item should be relative to this current route so if you want to make this one relative to this current route means what we need to do it is so we need to inject the private route activated route so here i need to provide this activated route and here what we need to do we need to provide items okay and here if you try to refresh this page so we are moving it to the slash item right now here you need to provide a second argument that is nothing but relative to relative to what is on this dot route it should be relative to the the current route that's it so now if you try to click on this go to item see this time it we have directly moved into the slash home slash items instead of the slash items so this is how you will be having the application so now here we have imported the router and the activated route the router is used for navigation while the activated route represents the current route this allows you to set the basis for the relative navigation and in this one the first parameter is the array of route segments to append to the current route and the second parameter is an object where the relative to is set to the current activated route that is nothing but here this dot route this tells the angular to append the items route to the current route rather than starting from the root so that is one thing so this is how you will be trying to implement the relative to in the angular so now for example let's say that if you try to see here in our example previous example in the same thing you are having first component child components like this right if you check here app.routes.ts file so here we are having first component slash child a slash child b so that means here we are having first component slash child a slash child b so now here you can able to implement the same thing so for example if you try to go to the first component.ts file and in this one if you are having an html file so for example let's say that if you want to implement for this anchor link so here you can add something like href is equal to hash or something like that you can use it okay and here at the rate click okay and here go to child b so just i will try you can have a button also just i am trying to use it so i am passing the dollar event to this one so here in this one first component.ts file where is this first component yeah here i will be having this first component dot shall be and it is of event of event and i will do event dot prevent default and here we need to inject the router and the route constructor and here you will be having private router of type router which should be imported from the angular router private route also we will be having which is an activated route that's it so now if you want to move it means what you can do this dot router 
dot navigate so from to where we need to do child b right so here i can use the child b so in this place it will be child hyphen b and here you need to do the relative relative to this dot row that's it so now if you try to see the same output so now we are in the child a and if i click on this one so now we are moving it to the child b so this is how you can able to implement the relative to in the angular hope you understood about this relative to concept in the angular if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev in this video we will try to understand how to access the query parameters and also the fragments in the angular components in angular accessing the query parameters like question mark or something like that you will be able to see it right so those uh, question mark uh, id is equal to 1 2 3 or fragments like example hash section 1 something like that can be crucial for routing especially in scenarios like a master detail interface example showing a list of heroes and then navigating to a heroes details page something like that it is a crucial thing so let's go in this video step by step in an example in the 18 stand angular 18 standalone components how we can implement how we can access the query parameters and all those things so first of all i will try to define the routes for this one so for this what i will try to do it is so here i will create two components there is nothing but nggc hero list so i will create two components hero list and also a hero detail so that we will start from the scratch onwards so let's try to create it hero list and also hero detail i will ball and i will be also creating another one hero detail it's hero detail so let's try to create these two things and for this one so what i will try to do it is in our app.routes.ts file so i will create two routes that is nothing but so whenever the user goes to hero and i need to load the component that is nothing but hero list component okay whenever the user goes to path hero slash id and i need to load the component hero detail component that's it so these are the two components which i will be trying to load it so now let's go to the hero list component so that means when the user tries to open slash hero it will open the hero okay so say, oh, sorry what happened app.routes.ts file so hero okay we are having this hero so page you are looking is not found hero list component so we are having it right so why it is not having so let's try to remove this one and rerun it again so i will try to rerun it again so that we can able to see it. so now when you try to open here slash hero it is working so when i after i successfully build it so restarted the build it is working fine so now fine so hero list is working so let's go to the hero list so i will try to do some simple example for this one so for this what i will try to do it is i will create a service for this in the service hero dot service dot ts file so this is our cs service and this could be a injectable and here i need to provide it in of root okay and here i will be using export class hero service and here let's say that i will be having a private heroes of type hero is equal to and here i'll be having uh, i'll be having some um, data uh, i will have a sample data i will try to show you a sample data i will copy it and i will show you and here i will be having a sample data something like this let's assume so we can have an interface also i will create interface here only at the bottom so that whoever want to import it they can import yeah fine so now we are having a hero service which is of type hero so now we can have two methods so here first of all get heroes so if you want to get heroes means what i want to do return of it is an observable of this dot heroes that's it so now i want to get an uh, get hero so that means single hero so you will be getting an id which is of type number 
and uh, that's it so here i can have an constant single hero heroes dot find of so i'll be finding h h dot id so h dot id is equal to, is equal to plus id that's it so here it could be a number or a string also now here so we got the id and i will return of 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 hero single one i will try to send it that's it so now hopefully everything is fine so now we are getting the hero and we are sending it and we are trying to send it. so everything is working fine so now this returns observable of uh, uh, hero or undefined okay let's try to do it so let's go to hero list so here i want to get all the heroes so what can i do mm, first we need to inject the hero service okay let's inject the hero service inject of hero service so i have injected the hero service in the constructor also you can inject it not a problem and i want to get the heroes okay so it's a observable this dot hero service dot get heroes get heroes that's it so we got the heroes now i need to show the heroes to here okay let's go to the html part and here what i can do it is so let's go to the ul and here i can have an at the rate for loop hero of heroes dollar of async and what is happening here yeah so async track hero dot id and here why we are getting a is so we need to inject the common module fine then we can able to get this one yeah fine and in this one i can have an li and here i can show hero dot name and here i can use a click event go to hero of hero i will be taking the hero that's it so now we need to implement this go to hero okay let's go here and i can have a go to hero and we will be getting the hero here of type hero now we need to inject the router in order to navigate we need to inject the router so you know that one constant router is equal to inject of router so we have injected the router and here what i can do is this dot router dot navigate and here we need to move it to slash hero and we need to provide the sorry this should be an array so sorry what is happening yeah so here we need to provide the hero slash hero so that it will be an absolute path not relative or otherwise we can have a hero also so why because we need to we can may also give it as a relative hero and we need to pass the id why because so we need to send the id right so hero dot id so this is how we will be passing now if you try to see here we are able to see superman and batman if i click on this one so hero slash one we are able to go to the hero detail and if i click here so we are able to go to the hero slash two fine so now let's try to work uh, complete this hero detail also hero detail component.ts file okay and here we can inject the hero service hero service is equal to inject of hero service so now here we need to capture that id what is that one slash two we need to capture that id how we can capture that id is so there are different parameters so now for example if you want to capture that id means so you it will be uh, you will be getting that one as an observable so for example let's say that in ng on init so in ng on init so if you want to get the details means so here you can get it as an in an activated route so for that one we need to inject the route so here we need to inject the activated route in order to get the current routing details activated route so we injected the route and here you need to have the this dot route okay this dot route dot snapshot so that you can get all the details so if you try to check it here in our inspect element okay you will be able to see activated route snapshot and in this one you will be able to see a params id of 2 so that means so we can have the hero id constant hero id is equal to this dot 
route dot params sorry params dot snapshot snapshot sorry this dot route dot snapshot here snapshot dot params dot id okay so here you will be not able to get it so something like you can use it something like this now here you will be able to do console dot log of hero id so now if you try to see the output for this one so here you will be able to see it too so now how can i get this one so here i can use something like hero dollar of observable of hero so you will be getting a single hero right so you can add it something like this okay when this ng on it when we got the hero so then you can add it in such a way that hero dollar is equal to this dot hero service dot get hero of id that means nothing but hero id we will pass it that's it so now we got the hero details so this one we will be getting it uh, what is it undefined also we will be getting it so here you can say something like hero or undefined you can say it something like this then this one will go away or otherwise you can add a if condition something like if hero id is present something like that also you can do it so now we got the hero details so let's go to the hero detail dot component dot ts file mm, hero detail dot component dot html and here if you want to show the details so do ng if okay so we can have an ng if hero dollar dot async as hero and here i can show h2 hero dot name that's it so now ng if is not working why because hero detail component we need to include the common module okay oh sorry not the comment common module so fine so now if you try to see the output for this one so here let's go to the hero so we are able to get these details and now if i click on this one so here i am able to see a superman for example let's say that um, i want to have a different scenario in such a way that in our hero detail dot component dot html file so here i can have something like any link okay a go to batman let's assume that we have we want to go to the batman so now here if you add a router link here router link router link is equal to so here i need to add in such a way that slash hero so we know that it is an two right so now i want to go to like this so a router link is equal to router link is not available so what i need to do in hero detail dot component dot ts file i need to include the hero details component also sorry router link now it will be available so now go to batman when i click on this go to batman see it the url has been changed but the name has not changed still it is showing the superman for example if you go to the same thing to the hero with the batman means you are able to see a batman but when i go to the superman and when i click on the batman that is nothing but slash hero slash two but it is not changing but the url has been changed why it is happening this one this is because we have written in an ng on in it we are existing in the same component and we are trying to access the snapshot param so now when we are existing on the same component this ng on in it will not fire again so that is the reason so this hero id and hero service is not getting again the details because of that one the older details are it is showing so in order to observe the id changes so what we can do so then we need we should not use the snapshot we should use the another scenario i will try to explain you in the next video so how to overcome this type of thing hope you understood about this thing if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev so now here i want to show you one scenario which we have left it on our previous video so for example let's say that here we are showing all the list of all the heroes details like superman batman we are showing all the heroes and if i want to click on the particular superhero if i click on this one so we are able to move to the hero slash one that means we are showing the particular hero name superman and now if i want to go to the batman that is nothing but hero slash two means so here i am not showing the batman name but the url has been changed but here the name has not been changed 
So what is the reason for this one? So the reason for this one is so here in our hero detail component. So this com this is loading the component hero detail and in this hero detail component. So we are injecting the hero service and we are trying to get a particular hero that is nothing but based on the parameter whatever the URL has a param. We are capturing that param and we are and we are trying to extract that particular hero using that param ID. But here in this situation what is happening is we are not able to get that particular hero. Why because so you when you are already existing on the same component and if you want to go to the and if you want to change the URL means so here the ng on init will not be fine. So why because in a component lifecycle loop when the component is mounted then only the first time the ng on init will be fired and afterwards the ng on init will not fire. So what we need to do here so we need to have in such a way that this instead of using the snapshot so we need to use an another scenario. So that means we need to observe the changes that has been happening into this params of id. So what I can do it is the one, one scenario what we can do it is so here so we can get the route parameter. So that is nothing but instead of having this one so we need to capture the so we need to capture the this dot so here we need to do in a such a way that this dot route so I will try to show you the uh, instead of this one I will try to show you the uh, what I wanted is uh, console.log okay so this dot dollar route so this dot route so we will uh, see the console of this one so what are the methods that are existing in this activated route if you try to see here in our console so you will be able to see an activated route here we will be having lot more things so in this we are using only a snapshot only so here we, if you try to observe carefully so we are having an <coughs> huh? so here we are having an params okay it's a behavior subject so you will be able to see a params query params and all those things you will be able to see so many things are there params subject params and these all things are having so now that means you can uh, you can have something like param map also so this one is an anonymous subject so which will return the same thing so params also you can do it so now what i can do it is so here this one returns a subject so what can you do here so i can subscribe to this uh, observable so here what i can do it is instead of the same thing this dot route dot params okay param map or params whichever you want you can use it params dot subscribe so you will be having a subscribe and we will be able to get the data so here i will try to do console dot log data so what is the data we are able to get it now let's try to see the output so the first time we are able to get an id2 so okay fine so when i click on this one so we are able to get an id2 fine let's go to here slash hero so the first time we are trying to get it and when i click on the superman so we are able to get an id of one fine and when now i am existing on the same hero detail component now when i click on the go to uh, batman see now the param so that has been invoked so that means i am able to access the changes in this url param so id2 so that means in this subscribe we are able to get it so what can i do here so instead of capturing this hero so what can I do it is so this one we can capture it into this one and we can paste it here that's it directly now if you try to observe the same thing it's so the same output okay so here you will be able to get the data data dot id that's it so if, if you are not able to get it so here you need to go do data of id okay that's it now if you try to see the output for this one let's go back to hero again so i am in the hero now if i click on the superman see here i am able to get the superman if i go to give batman so now here i am able to see the changes also so that means so here we have subscribing to the changes in the params of the url so we need to use the params here so now another thing what i want to do it is so if you want to refactor this code so how can i refactor this code is so we are able to get this one right so we are able to get this one so dot pipe of okay so we can go to the switch map okay switch map of so we are able to get the data and in this data so we can uh, this dot dollar hero is equal to so we are able to get it and here what I, what I will try to do it is so instead of I will need we will remove the subscription and here I will return this 
this one that's it so now if you try to see this this is a dollar of hero and this dot wrote parameters and here this one will return and what is happening does not exist in hero detail this dot dollar hero okay okay so it should not be hero it should be hero dollar that's it so now we can use it in this scenario also now if you try to see the same output we are able to achieve the same output but this time we are using a cleaner way so now i will click on the superman we are able to get the superman i will click on the batman now also i am able to get the batman also so that means we have used the switch map so that we can able to get it so this is how we will be implementing the uh, what i want to tell you is uh, the re responding to the changes what i want to tell you is so in order to respond to the changes and another one what i want to tell you is before closing of this one so now let's say that if you want to access the query parameters so if you are having a query parameters like question mark id is equal to 1 or something like that if you are having a question id parameters means how can we access this one or how can we send this one to the url so let's try to see this one and also we also have another type that is nothing but fragment so here you will be having a fragment so like this so now how can we access this query parameters and how can we access this params thing let's try to see it in the next video so hope you understood about this concept so what we have did is the simple thing so we have used the route so now we can also simplify this one also instead of using this uh, ng on it or something like that we can capture this entire thing and i can use it in in this one hero dollar is equal to and i can paste it here directly but the route should be added at the top why because it should be initialized before so now i can remove this entire thing and now this is a cleaner way so this is lot more cleaner way now if you try to go to the hero like this where is this one yeah hero like this so now if i click on the superman i'm able to see the superman and if i go here batman so i'm able to see the batman also so now this is the cleaner way of using this one and you can use a change detection strategy on push so that everything will be working finally and here we have used the async so there is no need to, uh, for us to unsubscribe and all those things so the those all the things is not there so automatically the anger will uns unsubscribe so we are not manually subscribing to the observables so this is the cleaner way and also the recommended way to use the observables like this so this all already we have discussed in our previous videos also hope you understood about this zero detail component how to access the dynamic root params if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdev in the previous video we have seen about the accessing the dynamic root params so if you want to access the dynamic root params we need to use the params observable or otherwise if you don't want an observable means we can use the snapshot so route dot snapshot also we can use it so fine so now for accessing the dynamic uh, params in the url we, we are able to use it so that params thing we can use it something like apps dot route dot ts so hero question mark id like this we can use it so now this id root param we can capture it using the params like this so for example let's say that in the url if you want to access the query parameters and also a fragment which are very much important in the url thing framing so if you want to access that one means how we can able to access it so let's try to see that one how we can able to access this one so for example let's say that if you want to access this one hero detail <coughs> so now if you want to access this one so let's try to i will try to show you for example let's say that we are having in the apps.route.detail so here this one is will be an hero detail so whenever you are able to go to hero detail i, not, I need to lo load this hero details now this is the hero detail now instead of sending this one as slash id i want to send it as a query parameter like question mark id is equal to like that one so now if you try to check it in this one so hero detail component if i click on this thing and hero list.component.html let's go to the hero list.html so here go to hero is there right in this one i want to go to the hero detail okay and here i can pass it something like question mark id is equal to and we will try to do it something like this we will we'll try to see whether we can able to achieve this one or not so here i can use hero dot id okay so this is how i will be trying to send it now if i try to click on this one so we are able to get question mark id is equal to these all the things we are getting it as in something uh, url encode format we are able to get it but we should not get it something like this we should get something like hero detail question mark id is equal to 1 so like this we need to get it so how can i able to achieve this one so how we can able to achieve this one is 
so we should not send it like this so we have a special thing in our router.navigate so how we can how we need to send it is so we need to use a comma the second argument we need to send it and the second argument will take an object so this object and in this object you will be having plenty of options in that plenty of options you will be able to see query params okay so query params so this query params we need to pass an object here so here i need to pass id hero dot id that's it hero dot id sorry hero dot id like this we need to pass it now when you go back side so like this in the heroes and when i click on the superman so here we are able to see hero detail question mark id is equal to one fine and if i go back and if i click on the batman we are able to see hero detail question mark id is equal to two so that means we are able to successfully send the query parameters through the router navigate so that means through the programmatic navigation we are able to send the query parameters now the thing which is remaining is that we need to capture these query parameters previously we have captured this one using the params but how we can capture this one so now for this capturing is so i will try to show you the in ng on in it so that i will console.log and i will show you that this dot route activated route so that we can able to see so if i try to show you this activated route here we are able to see this params is an observable in the same scenario you will be able to see query params okay if you try to check the snapshot for this one so if you don't want to get the observable means so you need you can get the snapshot in the snapshot you will be able to have all, everything the complete details you will be able to see it so in this one you will be able to have instead of having this the data in the params you will be having the id values in the query params why because we are trying to send it in the query params so now you can check it snapshot dot query params of id like that you can able to capture it so that means you can you need to capture it like this query params now if you try to see the output for this one so here we are able to see id is equal to 2 so hope you will be able to see it so now but we don't want the snapshot of the query params we need to have an observable so that means what you need to do here you need to send the query params that's it so now if you try to check the output for this one see now we are able to get the batman now if i go back to hero and if i click on the, if i click on the superman we are able to get a superman if i click on the batman so we know here we are able to see slash 2 right so how we are able to get this slash 2 so in the html so now here we are showing it as an hero slash 2 so what we need to do here so we should not send into the router link as a hero slash 2 we need to send it as a question mark so for this one what we need to do it is so now previously we have framed the query parameter in a programmatic way but here in the template router link way we need to frame it so how we can frame this one so we need to remove this slash hero okay so here we need to have something like query params okay so we need to provide the query params and this one will take an object okay so oh, i didn't remember exactly router link param whether this one is or what no not this one query params only so query params query params so we should be something like like this and here it should it should take an object id and here it should be something like um, hero dot id okay so it should be something like this that's it so now it is hero dot id and here we are having as an async has hero and we are able to get it the hero so why we are not able to get it this one okay this will be available in up to here only so what we can do it is uh, i will try to have a due at the top okay and what i will try to do this so here i can have it and we can move this ng if up to here why because this template scope variable so that hero will not be available now it will be available now if you go back so hero detail question mark superman we are able to get it now if i move over to the here hero okay hero detail it should be hero detail fine now if i go into this one so we are able to get this hero detail question mark id is equal to one but when i click on this one go to batman we are able to get question mark id is equal to one why we are able to get id is equal to one okay okay so hero dot id it is always one right so we need to pass the static one 
So now here you will be able to see. Now here we are able to see the Batman. See, this is how we can pass the parameters through the template. So this is one way how we can access the param query params and also how we can send the query params through the uh, what I want to say is through the template and also through the programmatic navigation. Also, I have shown you in the hero list component through the programmatic navigation. Also, I have shown you the next one which I want to tell you is the fragment. So how we can capture the fragment. So this fragment is also one of the important things. So if you try to observe the carefully, so we will be having slash. Um, we will be having some hash like this, right? So now how we can capture this fragment thing. So how we can capture this fragment thing is so now I will try to show you. So first of all, we'll try to see how we can send this fragment. So slash hero if you are there. So how we can send this fragment is so here in this query params only in this object only we will be having another one that is nothing but a fragment. So fragment doesn't take an object. Why? Because you will be having a single fragment only for a particular URL. So here you can send something like DSDS or anything or otherwise let's say Leela webdev our channel name only will try to see it so that we can promote our channel. So now if I click on the Superman here you will be able to see hash Leela webdev. So we are able to get the fragment and if I try to click on this one so we are not able to get a fragment if you want to get the fragment means so what I want to do it is so here in our hero detail component. So what can I do here? So here. I can do the fragment. Okay, we will be having a fragment is equal to here also. I can do Leela web or anything whichever I want to send it. I, I can send it. So now here, if I try to show you the output for this one, so here let's go to back. Yeah. So if I try to refresh this page, now here we are able to see. And if I click on this one, see the fragment has also been changed. So in this way, we can send the fragment. Now, if you want to capture this fragment means what you can do it. So same thing hero detail component. If you try to check it in our ng on it, we will be having a fragment. I will try to show you ng on in it. We will be having a fragment that is nothing but console dot log this dot route dot. I will try to show you the console dot log of this dot route. And if you try to see here, we will be having an activated route in this one. You will be able to see a fragment. Okay. <clears throat> you'll be able to see a fragment. So that means so what you can do it. So here you can check the fragment. So now if you try to check this fragment, so this is a behavior subject There is nothing but an observable. So now you can subscribe to this one and you can able to get that particular fragment. So this is how we will be accessing the query parameters and also the fragment in the angular. So hope you understood about this handling of the query parameters and the fragment in the angular. So I hope you understand about this one. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdo. <coughs> In this video, we will try to learn about the lazy loading of the component or the routing page. So let us try to break down the lazy loading of the standalone components in the Angular 18 step by step. Let's first understand the core idea of this one. So I will open the notepad plus plus. So here the core idea of this one is the lazy loading the first one. So here let me open this one. Yeah. So hopefully you are able to see the lazy loading. The first one is the lazy loading is a technique that delays the loading of a module or a component until it is required. This improves initial load time by not loading all features of an application at once. And the next one is the standalone components. So how we can do it in the standalone components. Standalone components in Angular 18 can be loaded lazily like just like the modules were loaded in the past. With the introduction of the standalone components, Angular now supports lazy loading individual components which simplifies the architecture of the application. Let's try to see the uh, working example of this one, how we can configure the lazy loading. So normally we can create a component and all those things we can do it. That's normal process. So we can also create the what I want to do it is so the lazy loading thing and all those things also we can do it. So now if you want to load it the lazy loading. So let's go to the app.routes.ts file. For example, let's say that I want to lazy load this child a component. Okay. So for example, or otherwise child B component, let's say. So child B component, if you if you want to lazy load it, then what you need to do it is so here you need to use something like like this. So you need to import and here you need to provide 
you need to provide the uh, where it is the lay, child b component right so here you can copy it yeah so this one we can copy it only we are able to get it yeah so child b component then what we need to do so we will get it dot then dot then so we will load we will get the component and we need to load this component c dot child b component that's it so this is how we will be loading the and here we should not use the component we should use the load component okay when you are trying to use the lazy loading we need to use the load component so here so we have used the path as child b so this defines the url segment for the lazy loader and here we have used the load component this is the key feature for lazy loading standalone components it dynamically imports the component when the root is activated now if you try to see the output for this one so let me show the output for this one so here i am opening it now if i click on the child b you are able to see the child b is working fine without any problem now if you go to the console and in the network so if you go into the console into the network and here let's try to move the node throttling yeah so in the js files and if i refresh so sorry if i refresh this page so i have refreshed this page let's try to see it and i want to load lazy load the child b now if i click on this one automatically chunk will be loaded on the fly so this is the chunk which is loaded so that means here we are loading the here loading the dynamically this So this is how we will be loading the lazy load component. So that means whenever that page is activated. Now when, when you go back to the child A and when you go back to the come to the child B, so you will be able to see child B work. Then again the JS will not be loaded. Why? Because already the JS has been loaded previously. Now if you try to see here, I will try to show you. When I refresh this page, so I will remove all the JS files, these all extensions and all those things. Now when I click on the child B, you will be able to see a chunk has been loaded. 304 means already it is there in the cache. Now when I click on child A again and when, when I come back to the child B, so again this chunk will not be loaded, reloaded again. Why? Because already this JS has been loaded. So that is why this is not loading. So this is how the lazy load will be implemented in the implement, implement, implemented in the Angular 18. So we also have an another thing that is nothing but preloading of the lazy load components. So while lazy loading reduces the initial load time, it can lead to a delay when accessing the lazy load route for the first time. So this one is actually it is a small 18145 bytes so fine so this one is taking very less time to load it but if you are having a chunk which is so more means it will take some time to load for the first time so that it will cause some delay for loading the component. So in order to decrease this one angler allows preloading the lazy components. Add a preloading strategy. So we need to add a preloading strategy so where we need to add it is so let's go to the app.config.ts file in this one we need to provide here in these routes we need to provide preloading strategy pre loading where is this one sorry in the provide router so we need to use preload strategy so why it is not coming i don't know so here pre load strategy preload strategy and here we need to use something like preload all modules that's it so now strategy okay preloading strategy it should be something like preloading strategy sorry so we need to provide it like this so it is not showing why it is a problem so preloading thing is not working i will try to check in the next video so leave it for this one so this is how we will be loading the lazy loading the components thing so then now the next one which i want to know, tell you is so the lazy loading thing you understood what about the dynamic component loading so you may be understanding that uh, the dynamic component loading and also the lazy component loading is one and the same but it is not the same so for example let's say that you are having the app component.ts file so just i want to load in the app component.ts file the second component let's say that second component that means second component i want to load it so I will be trying to use the second component here uh, like comma second component. So I will be loading it like this. Now if I want to use this component in our app component HTML means automatically we will go here and we will be using the app iPhone second. So we have used it like this. Now if you try to see the output for this one. 
so at the bottom you will be able to see the second works okay so the second component it is working now if i want to load this one dynamically so what can i do it so for example let's say that i will add a button load component okay load component and here for this one at the right click i will use load component so this is the method i will be using for this one and in our app.component.ts file i will use this method load sorry load component so this is the method which which i will be trying to use it and here in our app component.html file so we need to select the placeholder so i will be using ng template and here i can use something like hash dynamic <coughs> container so this is the dynamic container where i want to place it so i have used it in the ng template so now we need to capture it using the view chain here so i will be capturing using adrete view chain and here i can use something like the dynamic container sorry dynamic container which is the thing and here we need to read this one as a view container ref view container ref and if you want to make it as a static true that means it should be available in the ng on it only so we can use it like this and this is a container of type view container ref that's it so we have captured the container ref now what i want to do so first of all i made i need to make the container clear and i need to create the container uh, component in that container container dot create component sorry create component in that one and i can send the second component directly so we should make sure that that second component should be imported here now if you go here and if i click on this one second component automatically the second so here the component will be dynamically loaded without mentioning that second component uh, component uh, reference here so this is a, this is a different dynamic component loading and that one is a lazy component loading so this is how we will be implementing the lazy component implementation in angular 18 hope you understood about this concept if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela web dev in this video we will learn about the routing guards in the angular 18 so what are the different types of routing guards available in the angular 18 so in this routing guards so what i want to tell you is so the routing guards plays an important role in in the angular thing so that there are different types of routing guards available in the angular so now what i want to tell you is so the different types of the available root guards in angular are first one is can activate can activate child can deactivate can match resolve and also can load so these are the different types of routing guards that are available so what does this routing guard do routing guard allows us so i will try to explain you here so route guards so here yeah so route guard allows you to control access to different routes in your application based on certain conditions such as authentication they are used to prevent users from accessing specific parts of the application if they don't meet the criteria example not logged in or lacking permissions so the different types of available route guards that are available in the angular 18 are so what i want to list so these are the things first one is the can activate so it prevents the navigation to a route unless the condition is met can activate child guards child routes can deactivate prevents a route from being navigating away from can match controls whether a route can be matched based on the conditions resolve preloads the data before the route is activated can load prevents the entire lazy loaded module from loading so that is the entire concept so let's try to understand one by one about this routing guard in this video we will try to focus on the first one that is nothing but can activate so let's try to understand about this can activate routing guard so i will try to show you a simple example for this one also let's understand this one in angular 18 route guards like can activate is used to control whether a route can be accessed the can activate guard is particularly useful for scenarios where you want to restrict access to certain routes based on the conditions like authentication user roles or permissions the use cases for this act can activate so where we will be using this one so let's try to explain you so the use case sir the first one is the authentication prevent the users from accessing routes example dashboard admin panel without being logged in and also another one is the authorization restrict access based on the rules example only admins can access certain pages 
and data validity ensures that specific data is loaded or valid before accessing a route example a settings page that requires fetching user data first so these are the different use cases where we will be using this connectivate so now i will try to give you a simple example let's walk through a full real time example in angular 18 using standalone components where we create a connectivate guard to protect a dashboard route that should only be accessible if the user is authenticated so that is the thing which which we will try to understand so for this one what we will try to do it is first we will create a dashboard component so here this is our example so for this one i will create a first component nggc dashboard so this is our first component which i want to add to exit so this component represents a secured area dashboard that will be protected by our guard so now we are defining a standalone component dashboard with the standalone true option so i will try to show you that option here the dashboard has been created so let's open this dashboard.component.js file so in this one we are trying we are defining a standalone component dashboard component with using standalone option true the component will render a head heading and a welcome page so now what i will try to do it is so let's open this dashboard.html file so in this dashboard.html file what i will try to do it is so here i will use something like h2 okay dashboard page dashboard and i will use the paragraph welcome to the dashboard page okay so this is our welcome to the dashboard page so this is the thing so now what i want to do it is so here this will render a heading and a welcome message this the root to this component will later be protected by using a connect to it so let's try to do it so first we not to implement this one so we need to create an authentication service for this one we need a service that is nothing but auth service so okay let's go to the services section so in our services i am creating an auth service so auth dot service dot ts file so here you can have the auth service so for this one what i will try to do it is so in this auth service let's create the auth service i will minify this one yeah at the rate injectable injectable and here i will be provided in provided in of root okay export class auth service so i will be having a new class that is nothing but auth service and in this auth service let's say that i will be having a private logged in is equal to false so at that first time it will be a false simulating the so we are just simulating the authentication service state state so we will be having something like is logged in so if the user is logged in or not we will try to have and here i will try to return return this dot logged in okay that's it and here we will be having a login method so what i will try to do whenever the user tries this is login i will try to make it as an logged in is equal to true so when the user wants to log out i will mimic in a such a way that log out and i will try to make it as in this dot logged in is equal to false so this is the thing simulating a login and a log out now here what i am trying to do so this is our auth service and your service is provided at the root level so here so it can be injected anywhere in the app is logged in so we are having an is logged in checks if the user is logged in returns a boolean and we are having a login and logout function which simulates the login and logout actions by toggling the logged in state so that's it so now we need to create an can activate auth guard so let's try to create an auth guard so here in the services only just i will try to create for you auth guard dot ts file so this is our auth guard so now for this one so what i will try to do so here we will be having so auth guard export so this one how you need to create is export constant can i auth guard so you can have an auth guard okay it is of type can activate function so you need to provide can activate function okay so this is the thing and here you will be having something like this one so that's it so now here you will be able to see can activate function and here you can have something like this so now this is the method okay and here what you need to do so this one will uh, you need to return the value so here the void is not assignable so what it what it will try to return it will return something like it's a activated function and it will try to maybe is a sync god result so it will return a god result so fine so now let's try to so what i want to do so first i need to check whether the user is logged in or not for this one what i will do it is constant auth service 
I will try to inject the auth service. So we know that the injection context will work in this one. So I am trying to inject the auth service. So I already showed you in our dependency injection that in the routing guards also this will work. And here I will try to inject the router also. Inject of router so that the user can navigate from one place to another. So if the condition is not met. So now I can check if the auth service dot is logged in so if the user is logged in okay so now we will return the true that's it so if the, we will return the true and if the user is not logged in so that means if the user is not logged in, in the else case so if the user is not logged in then what i need to do so we need to navigate the user so here i can navigate the rotor dot navigate the user to login page okay slash login page so in order to ask the user to log in and you can return the false that's it so now block access to the room so here what we are trying to do we are we, we are using the new activate function in angular 18 instead of the class based can activate approach so we here we are using instead of the class based can activate approach we are using the action uh, function based approach in angular 18 inject of auth service provides an instance of auth service which we use to check the user's authentication status so inject of router, we are trying to inject the router and it will allow us to navigate to the login page if the user is not authenticated. And if the user is logged in, okay, the guard returns true, allowing access to the root. Otherwise, it redirects to the login and blocks the access to the by returning the false. So now what we need to do, so now we need to use this auth guard into our particular routing. Okay, in our app.route.es, we need to use it. So for this one, we need to set up the routes for login and logout and also the dashboard page also we need to set up so for this one login so for uh, sorry for login and dashboard page we need to set up so in the next video what we'll try to do is we'll set up the routes and we'll try to use this can activate thing hope you understood about this concept so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdo so now in the so if you if you haven't seen the previous video the 110 video in the angular 18 course please watch this angular 110 video before proceeding to this one so why because so this is the the that for that video 110 this is the extension of that one so now we have implemented the auth survey uh, auth guard so now we need to implement the routes so let's go to the app.routes.es file so i am going into the app.routes.es file so here in this one what i will try to do it is so here i will be having a path Okay, which we, 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 if you go to the dashboard, okay, dashboard. So if anybody user goes to the dashboard, we need to load the component. That is nothing but dashboard component. Okay, dashboard component. That's it. So now if you are having something like a uh, home page, so if you go to the home page, so we'll be having one home page. So path, uh, yeah, here. So we will redirect it to the dashboard. So redirect to dashboard. I will try to use the dashboard. Okay, path match full and also another one what I will try to do it is so low login. So if the user login, so we will try to create a login component. So I haven't created the login component. Let's try to create a login. So NGGC, I will create the login also. So let's try to create the login. So for this one, the login component, we will try to create it. Let's open this one. So now let go into this one. Let's try to remove this one. So here. If the user goes to path slash login and I need to load the component login component it didn't load anything let it load so it may take some time to load so let it load so fine the component has also been loaded so let's go here and add this login component so fine so now here we got the login component and now what I want to do so we have a dashboard component and also we have a login component now when the user opens the home page okay so we will be moving into a dashboard so here it will be asking is dashboard welcome to the dashboard so load component thing so for the time being we can remove this load component thing after component html so i am stopping this one okay so the dynamic loading of that one so welcome to the dashboard so right now we are going into this one directly and if i go here slash login means automatically the login page we are able to see login works so let's try to design this simple login thing so what I want to do it is so here I will be having so let's try to stop this one all yeah here I will be having a login.component.html 
HTML file. So here what I want to do, so just I will create a h2, so login and here I will have a button, so the user needs to log in it, right? So here I can ask the user to log in and here upon clicking on this one, click, I need to call the login method. So I will call the login method. Let's go to the login.component.ts file. So in this component.ts file, what I need to do here in this login thing, so what I want to do it is, so here I will be in injecting the components, the, sorry, the services like private auth service. So you can also use the injection also, not a problem. And that one is nothing but auth service. And here we need to inject the router, router of type router. Okay, that's it. So now we need to have a login method. So we will be having a login method. And here let's try to yeah, have the router. Right. So we inject the router. Now login. So now what I want to do this dot auth service dot login. So I will be calling the method login when the user clicks on that one. And what I will do it is this dot router dot navigate the user to where I need to be transmit uh, navigating is dashboard. That's it. That's it. So now let's try to go here and here the login is there. So when I click on this dashboard. Okay, so now here we are able to see a dashboard page. Fine. So, but I don't want to see this dashboard page. Dashboard page. What is my requirement? That when the user tries to open this dashboard, so we need to check whether the user is logged in or not. If the user is not logged in, means then we need to uh, we need we, we need to redirect the guy to the login page. So, how we can redirect this page? So here in our app dot file. So here in our dash component, so we need to use the can activate, can activate and here we need to provide this one and here we will be providing the auth guard. Okay, that's it. So we have provided this auth guard. That's it. So now let's try to check whether we can able to implement it or not. So now when I try to use this home page, automatically you will be able to see that we are able to redirect the user to the login page. Now if I try to click on the login. So now the user is moved to the dashboard page. See, so now when I try to use this dashboard, so now we are able to see that this guy is in login. Okay, so we are trying to refresh it, right? That's why. So now when I click on this one, login automatically, this login page has been moved. So this is how so we will be doing. So this is how we will be implementing the can activate route. So what we have did this one. So can activate route. So before moving into this one, it will try to check whether the user is logged in or not. So we have implemented a can activate function. So this takes a method and here we are injecting the auth service and also we are injecting the router and we are checking that whether the user is logged in or not. If the user is logged in, we are returning the true and we are navigating the user from to the login. So that is the thing we are able to see. So if I try to refresh and if we are trying to access the dashboard means it is trying to navigate the user to the login page. If I click on the login directly, I am trying to move it to the dashboard page. So this is how we will be implementing the can activate thing. So now, so what we will be trying to do here, if you try to see in our login.component.ts file, so we define the route for the dashboard protected by the auth card. The login route loads the login component lazily when needed. So we can also implement this lazily component also. So if you want to implement this lazily means, so what I want to do, so here I can use a load component. Okay, I can use a load component and I can load this one directly. So if you want to lazily component, if you want to load it means you can use it. So something like uh, load component and here we will be you need to provide a callback function and here you need to use the import and in this import you need to provide slash login. Okay, and I need to provide login.component.ts file and this returns a promise and you need to use the dot then and it will return a property and here you can use the c.login component that's it so now whenever you are trying to use this one dashboard automatically this one will be loaded lazily so this is one thing which you can do it so login provide just provide this login component what we are trying to do it just we are simulating the user login once the user clicks the button we call the auth service.login to log them and navigate to the dashboard so that's it so now you can able to check this one <coughs> So before ending this one, the summary is the can activate function. This the can activate function card ensures that user can only access protected routes if certain conditions are met. Here, example being logged in. 
the auth guard checks the authentication state via auth service so here the auth guard via auth service it will try to check it and either allows access to the route or redirects the user to the login page this is a common pattern in the real world applications where certain pages like dashboard or admin panels are restricted to authenticated or the authorized users so this is all about the concept of this connected function hope you understood about this concept if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you hi guys this is leela welcome to my channel leela webdo in angular 18 we'll try to learn about the activate child the activate child got so let's try to see one by one about this one so let's try to learn about this activate child can activate child so here in act in angular 18 the can activate child guard is used to determine if a routes child routes can be activated or not it's similar to can activate but it specifically guards the child routes so can activate guards the single root only whereas the can activate child guards the child roots of a parent root you would typically use this guard when you want to apply a security check or permissions validations to a parent level to control access to all of its child roots so for this one what i will try to do it is i will try to show you the step by step example for this one so how it can be used so for example let's say that um, here we are having the simple example i will try to take the simple example for this one let's say this is our auth service so here i will try to have a uh, has permission okay so let's try to check whether we have a permission or not and what i will try to do i will try to return the true okay so that means it has a permission now I will implementing the connect with child here only export constant has permission god we can write whatever the name you want you can write it here and this one it is of type can activate or otherwise if you want to check it means you can also have uh, separate uh, file also you can have it so here I have given auth god right so here I can check that a new file uh, has permission god so you can you has you can have whatever the name you want you can have it <clears throat> this is the name and export constant has has permission got and which is of type and this is of type can activate child so this should be can activate child function and this one will take here it's a method and here i will try to inject the auth service auth service is equal to inject of auth service okay and here i will try to use so auth service we need to inject that one angular core it will be fine and here i will be injecting the router also constant router is equal to inject of router so i can inject the router also so that's it so we have injected the router and all those things now what i want to do it is so here if auth service dot has permission if it has a permission means then i will return the truth so that automatically the children will be open and if it doesn't have means so what i will try to do so i will navigate router dot navigate to something else url i will do it so something like uh, slash no permission or no access anything any url if it exists for you and i will return the false to here that's it so this is our has permission got now if you want to check for this one for example let's say that we are having the route section right so this is our total route section and here we are having an connect with our auth guard and the, this doesn't have any child components okay so here in our first component we are having a child components child first component child a and child b so that means if i try to show you here the first component and this is our first component so this is our parent and here if i try to click on this one the child is working fine so now the first component needs to be loaded so that means the parent component needs to be loaded when i click on the child a then it needs to check whether the child roots has a permission or not so normally what you can do it is you can use in can activate <coughs> of type has permission got so you can use this one as has permission got like this now if you try to check the output for this one so if i try to check it here child a so child a works is then is, is working why because we have we have written true if i return the false here so then you will be able to go to the no access so for example if i try to access this one as first component okay and now if i try to access this child a so first component the parent component we are able to access it that means in our app.root.es so this first component we are able to access this one but if i want to access the child means first one of the child you have added in has permission got so which is an 
which returns the false. So if I click on this child A, you will be able to see that it doesn't have an axis. But if I try to go to the child B means then you will be able to see that it is working fine. Now if you want to apply the same thing for the child also, child B also means for every child root if you want to apply it means then you need to apply the same thing here. So then you will be able to see that it doesn't have an axis. So now here what it is happening? Now here this is our parent root and these are all the child roots and for every child root you are trying to apply can activate like this. So this becomes for example if you are having uh, four, 5 or 6 or 10 children means for every child like path you need to add and can activate like this. So this could be something like an uh, not a recommended way. So because of that one so what you can do it is so now you want to restrict the axis or you want to check the authorization of all the child paths which are present for this parent. So for this one you can apply in a such a way that can activate for this one. So if you apply can activate for this one what will happen only if you try to check the first component. So let's try to check the first component if you try to check it it will tell you that so first component so okay fine so here I need to add a comma okay. So if I try to access the first component it is telling no axis but if I try to access the first component slash child a so whether I can able to access this one or not you can able to access this one so sorry you cannot able to access this one why because uh, the can activate will not access the first parent so first parent is getting loaded inside the first parent only the children are getting loaded so you cannot able to access this parent root and also the child root also you cannot able to access it but I want the parent root to be accessed but only the children root should be checked means then I can use can activate child here instead of this one I can use the can activate child. Now if I try to access the first first component so here I will be able to access the parent root but when I am trying to access the child means I cannot able to access it. So only the parent root I can able to access it but if you are trying to access the child root means you cannot able to access it. Whereas the can activate total route this total route including the child routes and everything it will be restricted whereas the can activate child it will like restrict only the child but allows the parent thing so this is the main difference between the can activate and the can activate child can activate what it will try to do it will try to restrict the axis for a single root only for single root only but can activate child for all its child roots it will stop the axis so this is the main difference between can activate child and also can activate function so can activate child function if you try to see the for this one. So a functional guard that protects the child roots and here auth service and all those things we have given it and also if you try to understand so here you will be having an uh, what I want to do is you will be getting the route activated route. So these these things also you will get activated route snapshot okay and also the router also you will be able to get router 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 state snapshot. So maybe I'm thinking of something like that. So now here there is no need for us for this router. Let's try to see. Okay, this snapshot means it will not work. So these things also state also you'll be able to exit. So that is a different thing. So I don't want to uh, do this one. All. I don't want to show this one. All. So this is the latest thing. So we are implementing the functional based instead of the class based in Angular 18. Fine. So now, <clears throat> so we have also seen how we can implement that. Now, uh, how this uh, can activate child and also the can activate uh, this one is working. So, can activate child uh, if you try to use this one in the app roads means so it is applied to the only to the first component, meaning that the guard will be checked before activating any of the child roots like child A or child B. If the user doesn't have permission, means then it will be redirected to the no access route. So, that is the logic which what we have written. So, so where we will be using this can activate child is role based access. We will be using the can activate child when you want to control access to a group of child roads based on the roles or permissions. Feature toggles. You can conditionally activate child roads based on the feature flags in your application allowing or denying access to a new features without changing the parent roots. So this is all about uh, where we will be using. Hope you understood about this concept. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will learn about the can deactivate route guard. So let's try to implement this one. So what is this can activate can deactivate route? So let's try to open this one. So I will open the notepad plus plus so that you will be able to understand. So I will explain you the scenario also for this one. Notepad plus plus. So I'm opening this one. Let's open here. Yeah. So the can deactivate route guard in Angular helps prevent users from accidentally leaving a component with 
unsaved changes so whenever you are working in a particular component and you have did and you have made some changes and you are navigating from that component to another component so then in order to uh, in order to tell to the user or otherwise intimate to the user so that we are uh, so that you are trying to move to an another page without the save unsaved changes if you want to mention that one then we will be using this can deactivate route card when navigating away from a route this guard can prompt users to confirm their decision if certain conditions are met for such an and such as unsaved form data so that is there is a thing so let's try to explain i will explain you some simple scenario where we will be using this can deactivate so i will try to explain you a simple scenario for example let's say that here we are having this one right and here also we are having this one let's say that uh, i am having a new component that is nothing but user profile component so here i will be creating ng gc user profile so here i will be creating a new component user profile and for this one what i will try to do is app dot component dot uh, sorry app dot route dot ts file so here i will be having a, a new <coughs> new one that is nothing but path so if the user anybody user comes with a user profile user profile then i need to load the component user profile components i think it the component has not been created so let it create so it may take some time to create it my system is little bit slow which will be loading in so let's see that user profile component i don't know whether it has been created or not yeah it has been created let's try to uh, import that user profile component yeah so fine so now whenever the user comes to the user profile user profile whenever the user comes to user profile so here we are user profile okay i need to keep a comma so fine so whenever the user comes to the user profile we are able to see user profile works now in this user profile component what i would be trying to do it is so here i will create one something like one h2 so user profile details means we need to update so here i will be updating the user profile details let's say that i will be having a simple uh, input input type is equal to text that's it let's assume okay so here i can have something like a div uh, username so i want to update the username this is the username and this is our input text now what i would be trying to do so let's say let's uh, let's say that so i will be using the ng model whatever thing you want you can use it mm, username so i'll be having a username and whenever this input changes input so i want to uh, on user change i will be having like this and i will take the dollar event that's it dollar sorry dollar event that's it now let's go to the user profile component.ts file so here we need to write the username okay username is equal to just a sample name i will have like this and on user change so we will be having this one on user change and here we will be getting that one as event and now if i try to save it so now we will be able to see an output okay why we are not able to see an output okay ng model for that one what we need to do so let's import the common module and also the forms module we will try to ex i will try to explain you this forms module in our upcoming next session so first you need to understand event so now let's say that uh, i will try to update this dot uh, username is equal to so you can have it like this um, what i want to do it is so event uh, or otherwise let's say that uh, if you want to so whenever the user is getting changed so i want to update i will have a way flag in such a way that dirty flag okay dirty is equal to false so whenever the user is changed means so what i will try to do this dot dirty is equal to true that's it so now whenever the user is changed the data is changing means automatically the dirty flag will be true so whenever this flag is true means then you need to understand that something changes has been done in the prof in the input box so what i would be trying to do so now whenever the navigate the user is navigating so for example let's say that here the user is navigates wants to move from here to uh, a router link 
to dashboard let's assume that he will be transforming to the dashboard and here i would try to give dashboard so this is our link and here i would try to add the router link also let's see so now if i try to implement this one so here now when the user clicks on this one we are able to go to the login module whatever the thing so if i click on the login you'll be able to go to the dashboard so this is how will be happening so now when i click on the dashboard so user is able to do move to the dashboard now when i try to change the details in this one and when i click on this dashboard so the the changes what i have did are unsaved and when i go back here the changes has been gone and also i am trying to move to the from this existing component to the dashboard so when i am trying to move from this route to another route so i want to prompt it here in such a way that if i try to make any changes into the, in this one and if i move to the dashboard so here i want to prompt a confirmation message or an alert message something like so you have made some changes in the component so are you sure you want to move to the another page if i didn't make any changes means automatically it can move if i make any changes means it needs to alert me the that i have made some changes so if you move here all the changes will be lost so you need to show something like message so in this scenario you will be using the <coughs> and deactivator so now i am here how i can use it is so for this one what i can do it is so here i will be creating a new god so in the services here i can add can deactivate user profile okay so user profile dot ts file so now here in this one so you will be having export constant can deactivate can deactivate user profile it is of type can deactivate function and in this function you need to mention the component for which component you are trying to it so you can mention the user profile component not a problem and in this one you will get the component name and here you will be writing in such a way that uh, if component dot dirty if component dot e, uh, sorry so i will try to return if not of component dot dirty then it is there means then i will return the true or otherwise i want to show the confirm message in such a way that uh, changes will be lost are you sure so that's it so this is how you will be doing it now for the implementation of this one what i want to do it is so here in this user profile so i can use the can deactivate of can deactivate user profile so i need to use it like this so now if i try to expected what is this expected okay so now if you try to see here in this one when i click on the dashboard so i am able to go back to the page so now when i made the changes and if i click on the dashboard see here it is telling that changes will be lost are you sure yes means then it will move okay yes means it will move so that is how you will be having so here we are having a login page so that is why you are getting two times so let's try to see or sorry auth dot service dot ts file so i will try to make it as a true okay fine so now let's try to move it here yeah so now if i click on the dashboard page so we are able to move it and if i change make some changes and if i click on the dashboard so it will ask you the reason and you are able to move to the dashboard so this is how we will be implementing the can deactivate thing but here if you try to observe so if i want to use this can deactivate means i can use it only for the user profile component so if you want to make this one to be useful for all the components something like generic components which will be having the form type of relation type of these things means so then what you can do it is so for this one you can do a simple uh, round around something not round around so some simple refactoring you can do it so you can have an interface okay can deactivate okay so now here here you can have um, i can use something like i can deactivate okay interface right so this one is an interface and here you can have can deactivate this is the method which will return the boolean and this interface you can implement it here implements here like this and must and should this can this needs to implement can deactivate method and here in this one so you need to return not of this dot dirty that's it so now whoever wants to use this one so directly now use can deactivate so instead of using the user profile so here you need to use the can deact i can deactivate sorry interface right 
I can deactivate. So that's it. Directly you can use that can deactivate method directly. So that means so now you can use this component anywhere. Now you can use this can deactivate function. So for anything which is having the form. So now for example, let's say that I will try to refresh this page. Mm, oh sorry, you should not use the not. So here like this you need to use it. So that's it. Now if I try to change it like this and if I click on the dashboard, so it will ask you are you sure you want. So if I okay means it will go. And if I didn't change it means so here. Sorry, if I go back also, oh sorry, this one is the refreshing, right? So now if I go back, if I if I refresh this page without changing also, it will work. So this is how we will be implementing in a generic format. So can I can deactivate, you can use it. Now this can deactivate function, you can use it wherever you want it for any routing path. If you want to use it means you can use it without any problem. But make sure that that component has to implement the uh, I can deactivate interface and this can deactivate method should be existing. That's it. So this is all about this can deactivate uh, routing guard. So that, the, that is the same. So that is the thing. Hope you understood about this one. So with the can deactivate guard, users can definitely confidently navigate knowing they will be prompted if they if they risk losing unsaved work. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will try to learn about the another route guard that is nothing but can match route guard. So what does this can match route guard will do? I will try to explain you this briefly about this can match thing. So it is somewhat uh, uh, important, not important. So just you need to understand the difference between the can match and also can activate, can activate shield. The can match route guard in Angular 18 is used to control whether a route should be loaded based on certain conditions or not. So here the can match route guard when we will be using whether the route should be existing or not if you want to uh, consider means then we will be using this can match. So unlike if you are having a can activate a can activate shell what it will try to do it will control the access to the routes. It will tell you that whether you so that means the route will be existing but you but it can activate and can activate shell will tell that whether the route will ha you have an access or not it will try to do it. Whereas can match specifically determines if a route should be matched made available in the route or not so that means if the route exists in the route or not can match will try to it so that means if the can match returns false means that route will not exist or otherwise in can activate can activate shell if returns false means the root the route is existing but you don't have access to that route so that is the main difference between can match and also a can activate thing this guard is particularly useful for scenarios where you want to dynamically include or exclude routes based on a criteria such as user roles, feature flags or app state. So that means if you want to dynamically include or exclude these routes means then you will be trying to use this user role or feature flag then you will be using this can match thing. Okay. I will try to explain you a simple scenario how you will be trying to do it. So for this one what I will try to do it is so I will have a something like uh, <clears throat> let's exist that. So we are having an auth service. So here you can have a dynamically something like that. So let's say that I will be having a private user role is equal to I can use a signal also so I signal of admin so this means this dynamically if you want to exist you can you can check it this one so now here um, get user role so I can use the get user role method so I can have a get user role and here I can return this dot role that's it user role okay or otherwise I can have a simple role like this and I can send this this dot role. So this is the method which we which I would try to explain. So that's it. So now if you want to use the can match means so normally let's go to the app dot route dot ts file so that we can have a clear understanding about this one. So in the app dot route dot ts file let's say that we are having a hero component. Okay. So if I try to open here and if I try to open this hero component so we are able to see that this route is existing. So now I want to add a can match to this one. So that means if the can match function route guard returns true means this route will exist or otherwise this route will not exist. So let's try to see. So for this one what I will try to do is in the services. So here I will try to do admin can match. Okay. You can use whatever the name you want. Admin can match dot ts file. So here I will use export constant admin can match and it is of type can match function okay and here this you will be having a method and here i will try to take the auth service is equal to inject of auth service so now here 
uh, i will try to take take the user role user role auth service dot get user role and here i will try to read uh, user role is equal to is equal to admin that's it so now this one will return the true so now if i want to use it this one in our app.out.es so here i will try to use it so here can match i can use directly can match and here i will use the method that is nothing but admin can match that's it so now if i try to press he slash hero this one so it is existing why because so here we are returning the true now what i will try okay admin so now if i try to like this means so now if you try to see slash hero so you are trying to use the slash hero the root is existing here only but it is telling that the page not found so that means that root itself doesn't exist but when i try to use it in a can activate thing okay if i try to use it in a can activate thing then if you try to uh, press slash hero so it will directly redirect to some other place that uh, nothing but another page so this is this means here the root is existing but you don't have an access but here can match will try to show in such a way that uh, try to behave in such a way that the root itself doesn't exist okay so that is how you will be trying to have so this root itself doesn't exist it will try to show that you will be existing in the root but it will tell that page doesn't exist so this is the difference between the can match and also an can activate thing so what is the difference main difference between this one is so now i will try to explain you about the can match so what it will try to do it uh, i will let's go into this one yeah so main difference between can match so first one is can match so now can match determines if a root should match in the router especially controlling the root availability whereas the can activate so what does this can activate will do controls if a root can be activated whether the component can be loaded and viewed that is one thing and another one is the can match what it will try to do is it prevents the roots from matching in the root altogether if the conditions are not met so if i try to show you here prevents root from matching in the router altogether if the conditions are not met whereas the route uh, can activate route still exists in the root configuration but users are redirected if they can't activate it that's the thing so where we will be using this an application use so it will be can match is ideal, ideal for dynamic routing needs like feature flags or role based display of routes so like this this application use can match will be used where we will be using typically the can activate is so you will be trying to understand typically used for authentication authorization or other <coughs> access check you will be using it and god execution so if you want to execute this god means when you will be trying to execute the can match thing only runs when angular evaluates available routes that is the first match attempt so this one the first match attempt only it will try to check so now here the first time only it will check so now here runs when the root is being activated such as after clicking a link or typing the url so every time so this one it will run at the first time only so now the another one which i want to tell you is routes with can match so routes with can match failing conditions won't show up as matching links so whereas can activate thing if you try to observe carefully routes still show as accessible links but may be redirected if blocked so use cases where we will be using this one so conditional visibility of routes example platform based restrictions role based menus in, the, in those scenarios we will be using this can match root guard and we will be using this uh, can activate thing is access control to routes after initial root matching like example restricting access to the logged in users like this so when to use when to use each one so here i will try to explain you can match use this guard when you need to conditionally make a route available in the router based on dynamic factors like user roles feature flags or device types it is helpful for scenarios where routes should not even appear as accessible if they do not meet certain criteria use this guard to control whether a route can be entered after it has been matched it's ideal for handling access control based on authentication authorization or any checks that need to happen before a user enters the routes component so that is the thing and example use case scenarios which i want to tell you is so can match and also the this one so clearly so can match where we will be using this example you only display certain routes if a feature flag is enabled show admin routes only if the user role matches admin display mobile only routes for mobile devices and when we will be using this can activate is block access to certain routes if a user is not logged in restrict certain routes to users with specific permissions show error page or redirect users if they don't meet criteria to view the route so these are the different situ situations where we will be using in summary what i want to tell you is use can match when you want to control the route availability in the router 
and can activate when you want to control whether a route can be navigated to after being matched. So this is all about the can match route guard. Hope you understood about this concept and also the example also I have shown you with clear example. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will try to learn about the another important road card that is Resolve road card. What is this Resolve road card? So let me try to explain you about this one. So here, the Resolve road card in Angular is designed to fetch the data before a route is activated. So when the before the route is getting activated or before entering into the route, the Resolve route guard, uh, route guard will try to fetch the data if any data pre-required data is required. This guard is helpful for preloading the data and ensures that a route only renders once required data is available. In Angular 18, we can set up a resolve guard in standalone components, components to streamline the data loading, especially when dealing with asynchronous data sources like HTTP APIs. So let's go through a detailed example to set up a resolve guard in Angular 18 with standalone components. Let's try, try to explain you. So for this one, what I will try to do it is so here in this one, I will create a component that is nothing but post list component. So let me create this component. So before after creating this component, so let me go to the app.routes.ts file and in this app.routes.ts file. So here I will create a new path that is nothing but port path post. So then I want to load the component that is nothing but post list component. So let me try to load it. So if it is uh, so if it is created means then we will try to load this one. So it will take some time to create. Let it create. So here the component is created. So let's try to add this post list component. Okay. So now for this post list component, so what we'll try to do. So for this one, we need to create a resolver. So that means this post list component tries, tries to show the post data. So I will be taking a simple JSON placeholder slash post. So this is the URL which I will be trying to take it. And we need to call this HTTP get data and we need to show this data as a table. So fine. So for this one, what I will try to do it is I will create a service here post resolver. So here I will be using post resolver dot ts file. So for this one, so what I will try to do is export constant post resolver of type resolve function. Okay, it is of resolve function and it need it will be it will it will array of post. So this one will be an interface. So let's try to create an interface export interface post and what is the type of data I will try to do it is id of type number <clears throat> and I will be having user id of type number and I will be having a title of type string and I will be having the body of type string that's it so these are this is so here it would be taking the post data. So here I will be using the export. So now export interface post ID number user ID title body. Okay. It's a post resolver and this could take the post. Okay, fine. So this is a function self function. So now what I would be trying to do it is. Uh, so here I would try to inject the HTTP first. So inject. So inject HTTP client. Okay, so I have injected the HTTP client and now what I want to do. So here we need to inject it this one. So that's it. So now here. So what I would try to do it is so here. So return HTTP dot get and this returns. We know that it returns an area of post and here this is the URL which you need to get it. So here we need to get the URL. That is nothing but JSON placeholder post. That's it. So now we have created the resolver. So we have did the resolver and how we need to mention it here. Uh, we need to mention it for this post list component, right? So here we need to resolve. So we need to use the resolve and here we can add for which URL you want to have. So here I can use post resolver. That's it. So now we know that we will be getting the post as a array of posts. So now here we are getting an error that no provider for the HTTP client. Okay. So we, first time we are using this one in our app.config.ts file. So here we need to provide the HTTP client. That's it. Okay. So that's it. So now if you try to see, so the error has been gone. So now let's go into our post list component. 
okay so this is our post list component so here if i try to go to the slash post so we need to get the route thing so here if i try to get the route thing means so here i will be using route is equal to inject of activated route so here i need to inject the activated route that's it so now if you want to check what is the data you are getting it is in the ng on init ng on init here you can write console dot log of this dot route let's try to check where this post data is coming so now if you try to see here this is the activated route and in this activated route if you try to check the snapshot in this snapshot you will be able to see a data in this data you will be see able to see the post is area of 100 or otherwise if you want to get an observable means you can get the data this is an observable so now what i can do here so we can have a post of post post data you will be getting area of post and this should be imported so that is nothing but from the interface okay so here you can use this sorry uh, this dot route dot snapshot dot data of post that's it finish and here you can write it in such a way that this dot post that's it so now if you want to check this output so we need to go to the html part so this is the html part and here you can have something like a table and in this table you can have a t head and in this one you can have a tr and th so you can show the title in the same scenario you can show the body so i do i am not concentrating concentrating on the design t body and here you can loop over at the rate for loop so post of sorry post of post so you will get the post and here it should be of type post id post dot id and here in this one so you will be having the tr and in this one you will be having the td and in this one you will be having the post dot title and in the same scenario you will be having post dot body that's it so here i can remove this one and i can remove this one so now if you try to see here so we are able to show these all the post data we are able to show it so in this way so now whenever you are trying to go to the post page so here you will not you will be not writing the logic the all http post and all those things so from here you will be mentioning this in the resolver so before the route is getting loaded so this resolver will try to get the data and it will load the component afterwards so you can also write it in a different way something like if you want to write it in an observable way means then here you can write it directly post is equal to this dot route dot data dot pipe okay pipe of map i can use the rxjs map and here you will be getting the data and here i can write something like return data of post that's it so now this one will be post of post data okay as post so you can add it like this now this one will be observable of post data and here we are able to get this one all so now we are getting this post right so this one will become an observable okay and here you can write it something like post observable and it should be of type async that's it so now here so if you are trying to use this async async means then we need to include the common module okay that's it now if you try to see the output then also you will be able to see the same output then also you will be able to see the same output so this is how we will be implementing the resolver function so hope you understood about this resolver function so if you try to see here in our app.config we have provided this HTTP client and this is the resolver function so resolve function with what is the type of data we are trying to return it and we are returning the http and in the routes we are implement the can deactivate sorry not can deactivate where is this resolve function and we are trying to send the data with the key name so this is how we will be using this resolve got so resolve got we will it will be very much useful when we are trying to use it so the use casing thing so where we will be using this use case uh, resolve route guard is so i will try to explain you so prefetching the data ensure that essential data like posts or the user profiles is loaded before navigate into the page means then we will use this resolver reducing loading spinners when data is available instantly user don't experience blank pages or loading indicators improving seo and accessibility by loading content before page render web crawlers and screen reader, screen readers can access content immediately so this is the thing so this setup leverages angular ratings resolve got to ensure data readiness giving user a smoother experience so i'll be providing uh, so this is our, this is what about the resolve got 
So if you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Hi guys. So let's in this video, let's try to learn about the location strategy in the Angular 18. So now in Angular particularly, so we'll focus on this path location strategy and hash location strategy. So we'll go through this concept in detail. So and I will try to apply them in the code one by one. So now understanding the location strategies in Angular. Angular generally offers two main strategies for handling the browser URLs. Whenever you are having an URLs, so Angular offers, offers two main strategies. So what are the strategies? For example, let's say that here we are having this URLs, right? So we will be having this type of URL slash login slash dashboard. So slash post. So these are the URLs which we are able to see. So this is the one type of URL. So let's try to see. First one is a path location strategy, which is which is now we are trying to see HTML5 push state. This is the default strategy and uses the clean URLs. Example like this, we have seen it right like like login, like slash dashboard like that. It leverages the history.push state method to update the browser URLs without reloading the page. And how hash location strategy. This strategy appends a hash in the URLs. Example like this. It is useful for older browsers where changing the path without a full reload is unsupported. So for older browsers, if it is not supported, means then we will be using this chain hash strategy. So <clears throat> why we choose the path location strategy by default? So this one is also very much important, which you people have to understand it. So now the push, push location strategy is by default. And this one is the latest one you are saying. So the, all the browsers, modern browsers only it will support you are saying. So why we need to use, uh, we can use this hash location strategy, right? So what is the use? Why we choose path location strategy by default? So first one is the SEO friendly clean URLs without hash are better recognized by the search engines. This is the one and server rendering path based URLs allow easier server side rendering, which can improve initial page load performance and user experience. URLs look cleaner and are easy to share. So that is one thing. So how to configure this path location strategy, the first step. So for path location strategy to work properly. So we need to add a base HRF is equal to slash element in the HTML file, which helps the router build full URLs based on its root path. So here, if you try to go here in our, sorry, in our index.html. So here we need to mention the base HRF is equal to slash. So for example, here we will be having something like slash root means. So up to here, it will become the root. So here, if you try to examples, so here location localhost 4200 slash root up to here, it will become the root. So for example, if I try to remove, remove this one, so you'll be able to see slash root slash login. So here it will be slash root slash login. If I click on this one, so now slash up to here, this one will become the root thing. So here for us at the starting, so you need to mention this base here. So this one is used, this one is important for mentioning this path location strategy in order to work properly the path location strategy. So first we need to implement this base HRF is equal to slash in the index.html file. So next what we need to do it is so in our bootstrap. So here in our main.ts, if you try to observe carefully in our main.ts and here we are having this app config, right? Let's go open this app config and here you can provide something like provide router of routes. That's it. So now if you try to implement this one automatically the path location strategy and all those things will be implemented. So now here we have removed sorry we have removed this one right. Let's go into this one. I will try to remove this root. Yeah. So now we are able to see the dashboard and all those things. So this is the clear example up to know what we have did is the path location strategy only. The next one is the hash location strategy to configure the hash location strategy. You must override the defaulting default strategy during router setup. For example, let's say that so here if you want to implement the hash location strategy means so here you need to implement with hash location. That's it. So here you oh sorry. What happened? Yeah. With hash location. That's it. So you need to implement with hash location. Now immediately it will become hash login if you try to observe. So hash dashboard. So this is how. So this is how we will be implementing the path location strategy and also the hash location strategy. So we are having a simple example. So whatever the routes we have defined it, those all the things we will try to, we have implemented it. So that's the thing. So choosing the right one for the production right strategy. So which one we need to select 
which one so now if i want to ex try to explain you that one so now use path location strategy whenever possible as it supports seo and server side rendering so always try to use the path location strategy whenever it is possible and choose hash location strategy if hosting constraints prevent server configuration for ang so if you don't have a support for the server side server configuration and all those things so if you don't if you are having some problems or constraints with the server configuration and all those things then we can choose the hash location strategy so the output and all those things will not change but the framing of the url and these things only will be trying to change so this is all about the location strategy that are involved in the angular 18 so this is, i hope you understood about this location strategy in angular so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you